is. Your first time in the Whitney Forum? Yeah, it is. It is. I can tell there's a lot of history here. Yeah, it's very, very nice barn. I, li I like it. I'm, uh, once we're done this interview, I'm probably going to go look at the Wall of Fame over there. Yeah, there's some uh, big, big names there for sure. And I mean, it's just, uh, I think as soon as you walk in, you just kind of, you, you feel the history, don't you? Oh, you do. Like, you, you feel that it's a barn that has a lot of history. One of my good friends played here back in the days in the early 2000s, and he had told me about it. So it's, uh, it, it's a day that I was looking forward to. Quickly, before uh, I do let you go, we talk, of course, about Krentz. We talked about the goaltending. Anybody else that you're really looking for something that, they, they, that you want to see from them tonight? Well, I, I didn't dress most of my returning players last game, so I'm just really looking forward to seeing them right now on the ice compete against a, another team and see what they're all about. You know, I've been seeing them now for the last 10 days, but today for me it's the, the first test that I'm, I'm really going to have uh, and, and be able to evaluate what they can bring to the table here. Sounds good to me. Like I said, a great finish to the game on Tuesday. Good luck tonight, and good luck to your first year here in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. The regular season not far away, so uh, good luck to you in the Blizzard. Thank you. Eric LeBron, the Blizzard bench boss. We're just about set for puck drop. Referee over the Bomber bench. Not sure what's going on there, but we'll take a break and come back with puck drop momentarily. The Battle of Northern Manitoba, round two seconds away. Here on 1029 and Footspot of the Paw, online.com. Clear people items like bread and buns, or just because items, mm -hmm. muffins, cookies, oh, and pies, so good you think you're dreaming. But well, we got less than last year, but north of 53 co-op. Well, yeah, we got all the OCN ones. You so. shouldn't be, because the co-op serves up hot and delicious baked goods every single day. And the only place better than their bakery is Mom's Kitchen, and that's debatable. The north of 53 co-op, you're at home there. Dad, why isn't the oven turning on? Dad, the dishwasher isn't working. Dad, how come the fridge isn't cold? Is your home starting to feel like an appliance junkyard? Then get rid of that junk and upgrade to something new with Maytag at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Stovetops, dishwashers, dryers, fridges, and washers, Maytag appliances will always work as hard as you do to make your life easier. Get a Maytag appliance today at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 to 4. Are you looking for kids' clothing and supplies for September? Giant Tiger has got you covered when it comes to back-to-school shopping. Browse affordable clothing, footwear, backpacks, classroom supplies, and much more. There is clothing for kids of all ages. Also, visit JanTiger.com to stay updated with the latest deals and weekly flyers. Located on 2nd Street West here in the Paw, visit Giant Tiger today. You're on. Very nicely done on the big Jumbotron here at the Whitney Forum. And we're excited. We're getting ready for the second round of the Battle of Northern Manitoba. Mike Picknick in here. We talked to, to the coach, of course, his thoughts about the Whitney Forum. You're up in the booth. I know you've had a chance to come watch a couple of games. But first broadcast, Whitney Forum, uh, what, what's going on in here? Uh, how are you feeling right now? Listen, I'm just looking at all these banners here. Lots of legends. Lots of, uh, lots of championships. It's an honor and a privilege. Listen, that's, I, I, you know, Coach LeBros, when he did his walk around here today, he's hoping to do this, the same thing, right? He's hoping to replicate the same success that the Whitney Forum has uh, produced. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great night, folks. There's still time to stop by. Make sure that you come in person if you are uh, you're able to. And we're set for the face-off. The goal for the for the Blizzard against the amazing Jacob Bockler. And we're underway here at the Whitney Forum with the puck quickly inside the Flint Swan zone. They'll get it ahead. Speaking of Walker, that one got picked off in a skate. Redirects to center ice. Picked up and fired back in over the uh, Blizzard line that time by Fabrice Bourgeois. One of their big, uh, speaking of Quebec, speaking of La Province, he's one of their big pickups here in the offseason. Puck flipped back to center. Noah Hull will tap that one ahead. Grab here quickly. This is Alexi Silvestri scores! You gotta be kidding me! So that's three 
inside the blue line, and he blows it over the left shoulder that time of Lloyd of, uh, Moran. And I just, that shot just hit simply both of them. Mike, Mike Pickwood can't believe it, neither can I. <laughs> the, my jaws dropped, but listen, that was a sniper. I mean, what a great shot. Uh, pretty interesting that uh, Moran is starting tonight, but uh, again, like you heard LeBros, not much to think about it, right? You got a 1A and a 1B goalie. Just probably wants to see what Moran can do in this first couple of minutes. Well, we saw how he reacted there, Mike. He wasn't expecting it. Well, Alexi Silvestri, who had a sensational rookie season last year, scores 32 seconds into the opening period. Walker will get an assist. We expect to hear his name lots on goals this year. Puts on back again. Now, he get a quick chance, and there's a save by Moran. He only wants to come back right away and make a save after giving up a goal, like I said, literally inside the blue line, the first shot of the game. He wasn't, he wasn't expecting it. It's only it's already one minute in, and you can tell that this game is a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, a little bit more intense. It's going to be a great night of hockey. Face off at the Blizzard zone for the right of Moran as the Bombers get set for the face off here. That's uh, Bailey Iwanis. Mike Reagan talked a little bit about him in the pregame show. With the face off, the Bombers get it in. He's got Matt Egan with him. Egan will flip it to the blue line. Puck held in by Laughlin. He'll throw it back of the Blizzard net. Mueller is in there. He'll knock it down. Mueller off. Big pickup from the Alberta League last year. Guy loves to crash and bang. Keeps the puck in. Awana to love the board. Just shot. And there's a big save, a glove hander that time. Courtesy of Lake Moran. And I expect to see Flynn Flan. We talked about a lot of defensive breakdowns on Tuesday night. I don't expect to see nearly as many of those. But I think the one thing, too, you get an 18-shot first grade. Flynn Flan, a few more guys that can bury tonight. No, absolutely. And they're starting hot tonight. Hopefully the Blizz can solve this defensively. Well, they win this face-off. That's a start as the puck is picked up here by LaSalle. He'll flip the puck back to center. Those are trying to move it over the uh, blue line. Puck got knocked away. And that was Bridger that fired that one back in the Blizzard zone. Comes right back. The Blizzard have it again. That's Bernier. He'll drop that one back over to Hamming. Returning D-man from last year. That puck gets picked off. Opportunity for Lees. Quickly ahead to Egan. Egan will bring it in. He's bumped off the play. Falls down. Oh, the one thing about the Blizzard, they were physical in that game on Tuesday. Look for them to try and play that way again. This is Brennan Boyce back in his own net. Drop that one off quickly to Hanning. Pass up the right side off the tape that time of De La Salle. Goes back at the Flint Flan zone. This is Laughlin. Over to Egan. He'll chip it in. They're going to say an icing call. I thought that Egan did get a piece of it, but the official missed it and just kind of went off the tip of his stick there. Absolutely. And there's one guy I do want to highlight here, Quincy Suffrian. Uh, came in a few days ago via trade. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a young guy from Quebec. It's going to be exciting to see him and uh, what he can offer to this team, especially in his first game. I think you're arguing whether that was an icing call or not. I, Egan did get a tip of a stick on it, and I don't think it will be an icing call. They'll go to center ice. They did pick up on it after the fact. Jacob Walker right back out there with the goal scorer, uh, Silvestri, lining up for the faceoff here for the Blizz is Kubale, and you said that, of course, he's a big part of their team last year. Had looked pretty good on Tuesday night. Had oh, played with an edge. Really did. Bombers quickly get it in here. Says Walker down the side. A quick shot off the right shoulder that time of Moran. The rebound comes in front of the net. Puck skips to the corner. Walker will get it again. Jacob Walker with Alexi Silvestri. Two of the top premier offensive guys. They throw it out front. Puck will drift redirect to the blue line. Here's a chance for Chow. A shot. Hit a leg out front. All flip on here early. Walker back to point. That's knocked down this time by Bourgeois. That shot blocked and held here. By Moran, who's been busy here in the early going, Mike. Been all flip on OCN. I don't think they've had the bucket in over the flip on bomber blue line yet. Listen, that's this this bomber team, they play a, a suffering, su like not a suffering, but just a suffocating style of offense, right? They're just always on the puck. They play really, really, really fast hockey and just uh, they're aggressive too. It's great to see. Bouvier against the one is face off back inside the Blizzard zone. The Blizzard have won the majority of the face offs, but they can't do much after they win the puck. Flip on comes over and gets it away from them right away. Puck skips back to center. This is Bourgeois. Puts it around the boards. Back in Blizzard territory. Waiting for it that time was the uh, D-man Whiteman, who I really liked on Tuesday night. He tries to move it. Puck laying back in the Blizzard net. They'll get a hold of it. Played it up the boards. Went back to Blue Line. Knocked out by Bourgeois. And he'll fire it wide. Blizzard finally moving ahead. There's a nice pass. A chance for a two-on-one here. This is Edward cutting out a shot. See me rebound. Oh! I think that went off Harmon Laser's, uh, Harmon Laser Hughes' glove hand. Tremendous stop. Actually, it looks like the young kids started tonight. They got Laser Hume starting, but I think that's Ryan Bain in that. Or unless Harmon Laser Hume's got brand new equipment. 
tough to make out who that is down the other end of the ice without seeing the numbers. Anyway, two tremendous saves there to keep uh, the Blizzard at bay. Here's Tantric at center. Hammers it in. Puck hits the board. Comes right back up front. Grab quickly that time by Boyce. He'll dish it off. Quick pass. Knocked away at the Blizzard blue line. This is Hammings. Plays it ahead. Nice tip pass. And up the right side, they'll feed it over to Langdon. Langdon down the way. Gets it to try to use a D-net as a screen. Got a hard shot away. And Feller whistles over top of the bomber net. Blizzard hold it in. Another shot on target. Wrapped and smothered. And I think that that is Harmon laser him on the bench. So that is uh, Ryan uh, Bain getting the start here tonight. Looks like the Blizzard are really turning things up here, especially with that one shot from Prince, our guy. I mean, he really, really showed up in the first game. And uh, like LeBro said, they want to see what he has in these next three games. Face off back at the Flin Flon zone. The right of the goal center, Bain, is Sagari lining up here against Bacher. We've seen a lot of Bacher here in the early going, have we not? Absolutely. He's out there again. Wins the face off. Gets that one back here to Egan. Tripped up at center. Buck loose. Grabbed here by Lees. Lees feeds it ahead to Walker. Tried to flip the pass back. Intercepted. Comes outside the line. Tanchuk got it. He'll rip it back in. Bouncing puck back to the bomber net. Picked up this time by Whiteman. Whiteman takes the hit, but the Blizzard moved the puck ahead. They'll clear it up the left side. Down the wing that time for a streaking Edwards just out of his reach. Here's Lees taking the pass. Over the Blizzard line, hangs on, flips the needle, and he'll flip that towards the front of the net. And Morin grabs that, and he'll hang on. 15 and a half to go in the opening period. A one nothing lead for Flintstone, who scored 32 seconds into the opening period. Nice shot by Silvestri just inside the Blizz blue line as we get set for another big faceoff here. Lining up for the Bombers this time is Dawson Carroll. We talked a little bit about him in the pregame show. Regina product. Won a Junior B championship last year. And he came back at the end of the season. Real uh, brings a lot of electricity. Bombers bringing a couple of new players out here with cages. This is interesting. Two new guys have made their way to the bench. Who well, I don't believe are on the Oh, they are. Yeah, Ryder Muka was one of them. I didn't kind of get a look at the other number, but a couple of players out late. Maybe some equipment adjustments. Anyway, the Blizzard win the face off. They'll put the puck back inside the flip flon zone. Chow is there. Played up the board, picked up here by Mueller. Mueller's got it at center. Gets that one back to Sylvester. Trying to come back out front to, to uh, Laughlin. Intercepted that time and stepped outside the zone. And here's a partial breakdown for the Blitz. Cutting it on that a shot. Goal just fired wide that time. Great opportunity by uh, Saprian. He got it behind the D. And got a good opportunity. Fired it wide. Didn't get in quite cleanly. Able to break away, but the one D man did catch a piece one. Back up front to Supreme again. He's hauled down. He's going to draw a penalty. Blizzard going to go to the power play. Supreme hauled down. And I thought the Blizzard power play looked pretty good on Tuesday. I, I thought they manufactured a lot more chances than the Bomber power play. Didn't know they got more guys coming out here again. This is interesting. Three more Bombers to come out from the bench. Something going on. Maybe they weren't wearing, wearing full face shields. I don't know. I think the other player that came on was uh, Keon Sent, number 39. Anyway, the Blizzard on the power play here trying to get back in the game. They're down a goal. Flint Blonde leading the shot count 7-3. to three. Blizz with the faceoff. Hammings holds it in. Along the boards. They try to throw it out front. Bouncing puck fired wide that time courtesy of Krentz. Oh, he'd like to get another goal. He had two of them the, the big uh, time goal. Back on Tuesday night. Flint Blonde sends it down the ice. Hammings blows a tire. Goes down hard. He's got... Matt Egan all over him. Buck deep inside Blizzard territory. Hammings does get it. He'll start to skate up the ice with it. Hammings to center. Now he sends that pass over to Langdon. Down the wing. A shot. Save made that time by Bain. And rebound is cleared out. A minute 22 to go in the Blizzard power play. 14 minutes to go in the opening period. one nothing football on top. Blizzard working again. That hit a stick came out. Walker with the steal. By himself across the Blizzard line. Down the wing. A shot. Partially blocked. Good job that time. And I one of the Blizzard players to get over there and get his stick on it. Here comes Bouvier back up the ice to center. In over the flint flan line. Bouvier wide down the wing. A backhander Bain deep in his net. But he'll catch that off his left shoulder and hang on. 13.35 to go. 56 seconds remaining in the Blizzard power play, which has moved the puck around pretty well. No, they've been great so far, especially in that first game. You're seeing a little bit today. Still lots of hockey left, but so far so good for the Blizzard. Sagari okay. takes the face off here against Silvestri. Bombers win the draw. Silvestri looking for a second night, racing down the left side, but that's poked away that time by Cook. 
And right on the tape that time, a C. C back of the bomber net. He'll hang on to it. Right point it goes. That's Cook. Feeds it across the zone. Back out front. Nice pass to C. To Cook at the blue line. Cook with the stick clock and Zagari. Zagari hangs on. Back to Cook. That's a rip a shot. To put to the top of that good opportunity there with 29 seconds to go in the power play. And again, the Blues are moving the puck around really well in the power play. The Vestry will come away with it. Off to the races at center. One guy to beat one-on-one -on -one here with Cook. He'll cross the Blizzard blue line. So Vestry carries it in. Trying to come back out front, but knocked away by C. Power play's got 13 seconds remaining. Puck knocked away at center. Sent back inside the Blizzard zone. Racing off the bench. It's Lees. Lees a good move, but then he loses an edge. Goes down and going back the other way. C will feed that one back out front. Here's a chance, but he can't pull the trigger that time. That was McMullen. Penalty over. Flint Long gets three skaters away to center. Off the left side. There's an opportunity. Fired on target. Left pad safe made that time. By Moore. Rebound comes back to center. This is Laughlin. Knock it down. Feeds it ahead to Mueller. Mueller will now dump it back inside the Blizzard zone as a few players will cycle around looking for it. Puck wound up on the back of the Blizzard net and they'll blow it down. So 12 10 to go. Shots are pretty close after that Blizzard power play. 9 8 in Flint Long's favor. But again, the Bombers the one nothing lead. If there's one guy that's really standing out right now, it's uh, it's Justin Lees. I mean, man, oh man, he is just gliding on the ice, and you can tell that he, uh, you know, he played in a high level with the W in the WHL with the Saskatoon Blades. He's really, really awesome. Dawson Carroll set to take the face off this time. Gets it back to the point. Laughlin shot to fuck up on wide open net. They can't find the handle. Back to Tancha. He hangs on, shoots it off the side of the goal. Picked up on the side of the net that time by Muka. Muka had that big goal on Tuesday and had a gift there. Muka tried to work it back to point it out. Tancha sides it across the left and a long shot blocked in front. One point after loose biscuit, they can't get to it. Carroll taking a whack at it. But the Blizzard to come away with it. That's fouled off the boards that time by Osmond. Muka trying to get free. Poked it ahead. Here's Carroll, the shot. Walker to the corner that time by Morin. Muka after it once again. Hits it up along the boards here. Held up there. Carroll in there as well. They'll work it back to the blue line. It comes out. Noah Hull's got it for Flint one. And he feeds this one back here to Bourgeois. Bourgeois moves it ahead this time. The speedy number 13, David Ander. Ander, a good-looking prospect for the Bombers here. Sure, gets bumped off the puck, but it comes right back out front. Hammered in deep that time by uh, Stanglin. Blizzard have it. They're taking a look. Now they'll start to move it up the ice. There's a nice stretch pass. Grabbed at center ice by Krentz. Krentz fanned on it. Trying to get a second opportunity. Puck lane there. And that's fired wide that time by C. Krentz, a couple of opportunities again here tonight. But like we said, the guy knows offense. Egan back to center. Over the Blizzard line. Hangs on. Shoots it. Good save again. Courtesy of uh, Morin, who's been very busy. 12th shot of the period for Flintflon. Blizzard back the other way. Here's the quick pass to center. Scooped up by Krentz. Hammered it on target. Save lead by Bain. Krentz will try to grab the loose puck in the corner. Held up there. Puck squirts back of the bomber net. Cool will feed this one ahead. Bouncing puck to Mueller at center. Down the wing across the Blizzard line. Mueller back center. Save lead. Rebound. Oh, batted out of the air. Nicely done again by the Blizzard netminder. Loose puck scooped up. Blizzard come back. That's Langdon. A great move at center. Over the bomber line. Hangs on. Trying to fire it through. Aiden Chow had that go off the skate. Now Mueller back the other way. He has a body with him. Down the leg a shot. And reaching out and grabbing that is Morin. Boy, a good pace to this one tonight here. Uh, Mike Pickwick already at the midway point of the period. 9.52 to go. And... Blizzard a tough start, but they're hanging in there pretty good again tonight. I'm liking what I see defensively, and especially from Moore, and he's been playing great. You know, he let in one goal, but considering the shot factor here, 13-8 to 8, uh, for the Bombers, looking good so far. Media timeout will take a break. Flint Vaughn in front, one nothing. So that's be a goal early in this one tonight, the difference so far. This is the Battle of Northern Manitoba on 102.9 CFAR, and, of course, Flint Vaughn the Paw, online.com.
Clearly makes you feel more at home than a belly full of delicious food. And that Chicken Chef, they do exactly that. Make you feel at home. From the signature chicken and tasty pizza to fresh salads, yummy sandwiches, and hot soups, they always satisfy your appetite. And with new delicious specials every day, there's always something new for you to try. And what's a good meal without one of their delicious desserts? Fully licensed and fully delicious Chicken Chef, where it always feels like home. Here on. Alrighty, welcome back to Whitney Ford. Very entertaining opening period here tonight. Again, the Bombers leading at one nothing on a quick goal by uh, Alexi Sylvester. And I'm sure if you talk to uh, to Moran after the game tonight, he'll tell you he didn't see that. No, I don't think so either. And you know what? It's going to happen. Luckily, it's preseason. You're allowed to make mistakes like this. Like you said earlier, it's all of evaluation right now. He's looked pretty good since then. He has. He has. Absolutely. 13-8 is the shot to favor Flint on a big face off inside the blend zone is. The Bombers line up for the face-off. That's uh, Iwanis again, but Allen bounces up. Some of these uh, names and numbers just trying to get familiar with here in the preseason. I guess that's what it's all about. Bernie and Iwanis face off to the left of the Blizzard net minor Morin. Another Blizzard face-off win. Boy, they've been really good in that department tonight. I didn't notice them winning this many face-offs on Tuesday, did you? No, not but really. They dominated the face-offs tonight. They get the puck across the bomber line. That one's hammered wide that time. Courtesy of Boyce. And the veteran Blizzard D-man. Flintbond will punch it out. They brought it back in, but they said, in fact, it did scoop up over the line. So we'll blow it down with 9.25 to go here in the opening frame. Again, a one nothing Flintbond lead. Sebastian Hamming is a really entertaining guy to watch, both offensively and defensively. So far, he's been really laying the stick as well. Just a... A firecracker. He's awesome to watch. Nova Lane will line up against the face-off blocker just outside the Flint Palm Bomber blue line. There's a Bomber face-off win. Quick pass to Lees down the wing. Barreling in. So that's the out front. They score! So that's the out front to Jacob Bockler. And the Magic men are at it again. And these are two guys that should be near the top of the league in scoring. And they've been the difference in this one. So that's a goal. Beautiful move down the wing. Uh, Mike fed it out front, and uh, Walker just right on his tape. He's not going to miss from there. Yeah, exactly. Like you, like you said, this uh, this Bomber lineup so far is looking really, really dominant offensively and defensively. You know, hopefully they can repeat what we saw on Tuesday. You know, they're down two. Hopefully yeah. they can uh, come back. So the Bombers making a two nothing game. Sylvester will feed up his good or set up his good buddy Walker. Meanwhile, the Blizzard off the faceoff, hammered in. Bane going to take a wild ride out of his get. Got the puck, the blue line. Bombers jump on it. So, Vestry, two points tonight. They gave a second assist. I never got it. We'll try and get that after. It's a puck will pull back inside the Flint Pond zone. Tanchuk is there to get it. Being watched here quickly by Allard, who came flying after him. Oh, there's a giveaway from the Bomber net. Knocked down that time by the uh, forward... Uh, Kubale, but he couldn't uh, cash in on it. He, he knocked it down, made a great defensive play, then he couldn't get the loose puck as it was fired away from, but a great play nonetheless. Puck flip back to center. Picked up by Tanchuk. Kubale takes a bit of a run at him. And the Blizzard have it. This is McCorsker. Pass intercepted at center. Grabbed here by Egan. Egan across the Blizzard line. Quick shot off the crossbar! And again, the Bombers tried the deep shot, and that time he used the defense from McCorsker as the screen, and off the top of the bar. That close, Mike, to being a 3 nothing game. Yeah, you know more in his, uh, his heart's racing after that one. That that looked like it was going to get very deep into the top corner, but uh, luckily it uh, it went his way. Another face off inside the blizzard zone. Bombers win the draw. They get it back to the point. That's held in that time by Bourgeois. Bourgeois jamming away along the board. Picked up here by Egan. Had that chance moments ago. Egan tries to spin away for traffic. Back to the point. Bourgeois shot to flex. Paddle save made that time. By Morin. Puck fired off the side of the goal. Grabbed here by Hamming. Still circuit skate with it. Up the middle. Tried to feed that pass over to Krentz. It was broken up, but the Bombers will fire it back inside the Blizzard zone. And again, Hamming back on his keister. But he gets some help here in the corner. Puck ripped around the boards, but intercepted this time. And held in by Noah Hool. Pass out front. Grabbed here by Krentz. Krentz can't clear it out. Puck set back inside the Blizzard zone. Grabbed here. By Sem. He can't hold it in. Puck off the glass, back inside the Flint Pond zone, and we'll have to be careful on a guy on top of him. Feeds it ahead. Here's Liam Bridger. That's a nice stick handling at center. Bridger, returning from last year, drops it back to Mueller. Over to Hull. 
Back to the other left, the rim out front, shoots good. Love saved that time by Lawrence shut the door on a defensive breakdown by the Blizzard in front. They gave Mueller way too much room. Way too much room is right. And uh, Morin, I mean, again, he's just been unlucky so far with these goals. But uh, unfortunately, that's that's hockey, right? And especially with these first uh, this first line on, these starters on, it's going to happen. Bombers start to run away with the shots again. It's 16-8 in their favor. But here's an opportunity here. Now Langdon at center got stopped. Grabbed here by the Bombers. Iwanis still bring it back in over the Blizzard line. Iwanis, first shot got blocked. Back of the goal to Bridger, trying to poke it out front. Puck laying back to the blizzard deck, grabbed this time by Ward. Ward, off the boards, can't get the puck to settle down. Now it comes back to center. This is Chow, ahead to Mueller. A good shift for him. Dropped it back to Iwanis, off his stick, but right on the tape that time at Chow. He'll feed this one back over to Leper. Leper across the uh, o uh, blizzard line, sends it on target. Save made by Moore. Rebound, they can't corral it. Blizzard moving to the line, but held in. Bombers dump it back in. That's grabbed to the side of the goal that time by the D-man, Cook. Cook back to the blizzard net. Will hang on to it. Swings the pass ahead. Kuala will bounce it off the boards. Back inside the football zone. Chow in there. And he'll feed it back to that for Leper. Leper. Pass up the right side. Had a good opportunity to hit Ryder Muka, but out of his reach. And intercepted that time by Whiteman. Blizzard poke it back down the ice. Should be an icing call. Nash can go back and touch up. Back of his own net. 5.57 to go in the opening period. Football in front 2 nothing. The veterans coming through tonight. Uh, Alexi Silvestri and uh, Jacob Walker, a couple of nice goals. As football continues to lead the shot count as well, 17-8. to eight. Not only are they leading the shot, the shot clown, I, the shot count, pardon me, I think they're just a little bit more physical right now. Well, I think that, too, that, that, that they're also uh, the veteran guys. Uh, the Blizzard, I mean, we saw it. They're going to have to start hitting a bit more and trying to slow down that speed. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Not only that, but I just think these guys, you know, especially for the Bombers, they're... They're used to playing with each other, right? They've been on the team a little bit more longer. As for the Blizzard, it's kind of a new cast. Well, the big guys are out there. Walker out there again. Trying to come back to the The blue line, left on a drive. That gets blocked. And Puck will come back to center. Lapland fires it right back in. McCorster picks it up. The big Blizzard D-man back in his own net. Up the boards, intercepted by Silvestri. What a period he's had. Bouncing puck. McCorster's got it. Side of the Blizzard net. He'll take a look. Now he'll flip the puck out. Over top of the arm that time, and Laughlin races inside the flip on zone. Sup Suprian is there. Suprian tried to work it back out front. Puck tapped away from him, picked up by Silvestri at center. Lead pass, Lee trying to split the D. He'll pick it up back of the goal. Battling back there with Hamming. Walker looking for it. Silvestri that's got it, but knocked away that time. Good puck pursuit by Langdon. Langdon feeds that one back over to uh, Kubale. Kubale along the board, able to take a check and move it ahead, but intercepted here by Silvestri, blows the tire and throws it in the far corner. Picked up by Tanchuk. Lifted it out, but a good job that time by the Blizzard D-man Boyce to hold it in. I can see hit it ahead of the glove pass, so will blow that down. 4.50 to go, opening period. Once again, a 2 nothing Flint Juan lead. Blizzard, uh, like we said on Tuesday, need the next goal. They do. They absolutely do. I think that it, I, it, all it takes is one goal to really fire this team up. You saw it on Tuesday. You know, with four minutes left, four minutes and 50 seconds left, hopefully they can make some magic happen. Bombers win the draw up the middle to Egan. He's going to draw a penalty, I think. A slashing call as his stick gets whacked out of his hand. So flip ball for the first time tonight. We'll get an opportunity on the power play. Oh, uh, the Blizzard had one chance. They're 0 for 1. So Flint bought a chance if they want to try to avoid maybe what happened on Tuesday, try to bury here on this power play. Didn't get, didn't really do much on their power play on Tuesday night, but again, obviously, a lot more weapons in the in the lineup tonight. No, a lot of starters in. It's going to be interesting to see this, uh, you know, these all these starters on the for the Flint for the Flint Flint Bombers really, uh, you know, make an appearance and make something happen with their first power play opportunity. So the faceoff inside the Blizzard zone is uh, getting ready for the faceoff here for Flint Flint. Will be Cohen Simp had a goal. In that loss on Tuesday, throws it towards the front of the Blizzard net. That's knocked away that time by Hamming. He bad on it, then he lost his stick. Flint Flint will hold it in. Laughlin at the point. Along the boards this time. Back to Laughlin again. Sends the pass to Tanchuk. Along the boards to Egan. Tanchuk got the blue line. Back to Egan. A shot. Right pad save made by Morin. Rebound comes right back out front. Flint Flint can't hold it. Race for the puck at center. Race it after at that time. Was a C. 
Riley C throws it back in front of the bomber net. He was hoping that Bouvier would cut to the front of the net, but knocked away here by Egan. Egan back the other way offside. They'll blow that one down. And a minute 22 remaining in the Flint Swan power play. 4.05 in the opening period. Few more fans picking in. Looked a little empty there a few minutes ago. A little bit uh, late getting in the game here tonight. People are excited though. Lots of people watching and if, you know just getting that uh, getting that feel for the upcoming season. Armour Green on the power play. This is Buckler down the left side across the Blizzard line. Trying to come back up front to Bridger. Intercepted that time. Fired back down the ice. Courtesy of De La Salle. Noah Hull will pick up from his goalie back of his own net. Wins the pass to Buckler. Quickly to Lee. Lee's Flying across the Blizzard line, down the right side, back down, front open net through the legs of Bachner that time. Held in by Noah Hull. Lees comes back to help out, sends the pass back out front to Bachner. Back of the goal, it goes to Silvestri. Top of the circle to Lees, but a great job that time by the Blizzard. Stuck forward, Dallas now gets his stick on it. He'll redirect the puck over the glass and out of play. You know Bachner wants that one back. I mean, no kidding. It was wide open then. Great setup by uh, Lees. So three and a half minutes to go in the period. 47 seconds remaining in the Flin Flon power play. Face off to the right of the Blizzard netminder, Lake Morins. 19 shots on him in this opening period. Thomas win the draw. One timer, Bachler. Not sure what that hit. I think it hit somebody in front. The puck fell off the side of the net. Bridger tried to jam away. Him and Hamming battle. Back out front. Bulls got it. Finds a pass. Quick job, uh, opportunity that time for Lees, but off the right shoulder that time once again of Morris. Boy, he's even busy here in this opening period. Lees again. Good move there, brings it in deep. Hangs on to it, sends it back out front. Here's Bachler. Whips on that one, he'll hold the puck in. 15 seconds remaining in the power play. Back to Hool. Top of the left circle for Lees. Great move again. Lees to the front of the net, he can't finish. Puck intercepted, held in by Hool. Now he turns it over, and the Blizzard have a partial breakaway here. That's Landon cutting him, but he ran out of gas. And the Bombers will swing it away from him, but they're 0 for 1 on the power play, but can't say they didn't have opportunity. Here they are again. Silvestri back in over the line. Alexi Silvestri, two points tonight, a goal, and an assist his team in front, 2 0. Two and a half to play in this opening period. Puck lifted into the blue line. Flint will try to hold it in. They do. Now it comes out. Grabbed here by Langdon. Tried to come back up the middle that time to McMullen. Bombers get it back. This is Lepper. Big signing out of Brandon here in the offseason. Gets it over to Iwanis. He's inside the Blizzard zone. Hitting up along the boards. Can't do much with it. Puck kicks the blue line. Lepper held in. Now it's knocked away. This is Crunch down the wing. Nice feed out front. And it's... Not sure why they blew that. That was an offside, was it? It seems as though... Looks Must like they're going to for that, yeah. You, you know, two things here. You can really see that these, uh, for the Blizzard side of things, they they got to build up a connection more. You know, these guys are really are really new with each other. Hopefully they can, uh, you know, tune things up in practice and during these preseason games. Bombers win this face off. Chow will feed it back to Leopard. Leopard at center. He's got some room. He'll skate with it across the Blizzard line. Lost the handle. Poked away by Krentz. This will send Chow back in his own zone. Better be careful. He's got the uh, speedy uh, Riley C coming in on him. Buck first free, back of the bomber net. Picked up here by Iwanis. Iwanis tried to come back up the middle that time. Play broke it up. Blizzard get it back. And they'll feed it back up the right side. They were looking that time for C, but play broke it up. Now it's an opportunity the other way for the Bombers. Cutting in, getting a chance that time with David Adner. And he'll get the quick shot away and save made once again by Lake Morin. 22-7. The shots in favor of Flint Swan. And full marks, I guess, for a 2-0 lead here as we get to the latter stages of the opening period. You know, this period really looking like the first period on Tuesday. I mean, a high sh shot count when it comes to the Bombers. Hopefully, Right off the face off another opportunity fired on target that time. That was uh, Trevor Stanglin. And boy, Moran, he can't, he's got to be prepared all the time because you never know when a shot's going to come. Yeah, they got to help him out a little bit here. Yeah, they're going to have to make some adjustments here in the opening period, like you said, to help out their goaltender, who's had a very good opening period. 23-7 the shots. It's over a minute to go. Blizzard can't get it out. They get a couple chances to whack at it. Stays in. Picked up this time by Boyce. And now it's moved to center. Cut off by Lapid. He'll play it back inside the Blizzard zone. And Boyce has got to go back to get it with a guy on top of him. Back of the goal. He swung that pass over to Hammond. 
Hamming and Boyce trying to hold the fort. Boyce has got it. He'll take a look. Hangs on. Shot intercepted here. Puts one, holds it in. Far towards the front of the net. Hamming will knock that one down. Back it off the board. Got it back to center. Picked up by Tashek. And rifle back in and look out. Morgan didn't have any idea where it was. And it just hit the side of the net. Yeah, I don't think he even knew that he fired it back in there. Here's a quick pass to center. Grabbed here by Sigari. Hit hard outside the bomber blue line. Now it's a race for the puck. It's Egan down the wing. Feeds it out front, but he couldn't get it over to Mueller. Nice job that time by the Blizzard D-man, now Whiteman, who got a piece but knocked it down because it looked like a lot of room on that right side there for Mueller. One thing, too, I mean, you can tell these guys that played here last year, at least for the Blizzard, really, really physical, really laying the stick. Love to see it. Another face-off in the Blizzard zone. 20 seconds to go in the opening period. Flintstone wins the draw. That shot fired wide that time by Bourgeois. Puck makes its way at the back of the Blizzard net. Flintstone jamming away. That's Mueller. Had that chance moments ago. In the corner, trying to battle here. If he's getting stood up by Cook. Cook loses his helmet. He better skate off the ice or he'll get a penalty. And I'm surprised that they didn't blow that down. He picked it up and put his helmet back on. And normally, if you lose your helmet, you're supposed to skate to the to the bench, and they call you, you know, I mean, you didn't put it right back on. But, Mike, I believe the ruling on that is if you lose your helmet, you got to get off the ice immediately. I, I, listen, I agree with you there, but you got to think. That's it, interesting to me. Yeah, it's preseason, right? So, you, you, you think maybe they, they're not as, uh, you know, they're not as strict when it comes to rules like that, especially with 10 seconds left. But, uh, you know, in a real season game, uh, you, you got to skate off the ice as soon as that, that happens, right? As soon as that occurs. Well, the Bombers got to be happy with that effort in the opening period. They get 24 shots, including a couple of goals here. We'll take a break. The first intermission show coming up. We'll take a look at that first period scoring summary. we got a conversation with Justin Lees and, of course, a lot of other fun stuff from the Whitney Forum. Nothing beats hockey. Nothing beats being back at the Whitney Forum. And nothing beats the Battle of Northern Manitoba. It will continue on 102.9 and Flint Swan in the Paw online.com. Clear. Looking to make some extra cash when spring cleaning? Uh, we have uh, seven to go for the uh, rest of the period till intermission. Putting equipment and more. Maybe you're down on some cash and a bill is due. Payday loans are simple and yep. easy. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit their store at 380 Hazelwood Street or message them on Facebook for more information. Every day, you're confronted with choices. Snooze or not snooze. Decap a regular walk or run. With every choice you decide whether you're the kind to coast through life surviving or grab life by the horns and thrive. Jack Links is here to power the thrivers. Arctic Beverages is proud to supply Jack Links to those thrivers because Jack Links protein isn't just a snacking decision. It's a statement about the type of person you really are. Arctic Beverages for the thrivers. Your future in IT starts at University College of the North. We focus on hands-on, interactive learning. You'll graduate with the experience and practical training you need to thrive in entry-level IT support roles. Graduates will be prepared to take industry-recognized certification exams. This sets you up to apply for high-demand jobs. Step into a world of possibilities and train for a career in IT. Classes start this September at the PAW campus. Apply now at UCN.ca. UCN. Here you can. Are you ready to... Ten seconds. University College of North. Satino Tigis Kino Maraynao. Ahí en Topa Atenao. UCN.ca. UCN. Egotaka. Tagis Panu. Man, you're on. And we're back at the Whitney Forum. Rob Hart and Mike the Real Deal Pick Look. 2 nothing lead for the Flint Pond Bombers after the opening 20. And boy, talk about a great way to start the game tonight, Mike. Alexi Salvestri, of course, he was uh, a dynamite player from last year. Basically comes back their leading scorer from last season. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think that, uh, that Lloyd Moran expected that shot. He had a picture-perfect one that's inside the blue line and went over top of his left hand uh, shoulder to open up the scoring. No, absolutely, and I'm curious to see what they do th in this uh, second period here. Do they maybe change it up? Do they maybe switch it at the five-minute mark? It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays the rest of this period and really the rest of this game for as long as he's on the ice. Well, Silvestri, a finalist for Rookie of the Year last year, 21 goals. He wound up with uh, 41 points. Actually, Walker, I guess, would be the top scorer coming back from last year. I wasn't sure if Walker had enough games in, but he did. Uh, they're, he's a top goal guy with 21. Walker had 13 last year, but the leading point getter coming back with 44. And he was the guy that scored the second goal. 
on a beautiful feed from Alexi Sylvester. So these two guys, if they get room, they're going to burn you. And speaking of Vossler, I mean, listen, he could have had two goals or three goals Yeah, tonight. he missed that one that went through his leg. A couple, right? And he, he missed a couple of opportunities there. But then again, like we said, it's preseason, right? You got to get the jitters out. You know, some of these guys... Just like uh, just like the bomber side of things, on, like on the on the blizzard side of things, these guys are getting used to each other, getting used to uh, each other's pace, and really just trying to find a rhythm with each other. So that's the story. Uh, Sylvester, 32 second vent, quick shot over top of the left shoulder of uh, Moore, and the assist went to Jacob Vockler, and then Vockler uh, able to stun up Sylvester for the second goal at the 10:44 mark. I should mention there was a second assist to that Vockler goal. We didn't get it as of yet, but hopefully we'll get that updated before the game's done. But all football and offensively. 24 to 7. The shots, Mike, but again, Blizzard were outshot 18 to 7 uh, in the fall Tuesday. Came out, played a lot better. We'll see what they can do this time around, but again, like I said, a lot more, uh, certainly a lot more weapons in the bomber repertoire tonight, but they got to start hitting and they got to find a way to try and slow down those bomber forwards because as you notice tonight, went fun going wide all the time and they haven't been able to answer the they come in wide. They haven't been able to stop them once coming across the blue line. It's been tough for the bomber. I mean, it's been tough for the blizzard, uh, pardon me. But, uh, you know, this is uh, one of those things that Coach LeBros is teaching uh, right now as he starts his uh, head coach journey up north, right? He wants to build a foundation of toughness, uh, grittiness, right? Like, just like the, the, how they played back in the day when the blizzard first started in the early 2000s. Uh, hopefully, you know, they can, uh, you know, tune some tune some things up, maybe go back to the drawing board a little bit, maybe uh, switch some things up, and uh, hopefully they can, you know, come back just like on Tuesday. Well, they got to get the next goal for sure. I don't think they want to fall down three, but saying that, we still got two full periods to go. Anything can happen. Two nothing. Sylvester and Vox with the damage so far. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more of the opening intermission. Uh, Justin Lees, of course, the big story, one of the big stories entering play tonight. A uh, former Western Hockey Leaguer, of course, uh, a hometown Flin Flon boy. Wanted to finish out his career with the Bombers. He finally got his release from the Western Link. He's out there tonight. You've been impressed by his play. He's been great. I saw him up against uh, Connor Bedard when they were, when the playoffs were happening in uh, in Saskatoon. And man, oh man, it was awesome to see. He's a great player, and it, it really shows on the ice tonight. Like he glides and just his a lot shot of speed. Was, yeah, a lot of speed. His shot selection. It's uh, it's fantastic. You can really tell that he's uh, a former WHL player. Well, here what he has to say. He's our Bomber profile coming up next. The opening intermission continues. The Battle of Northern Manitoba on 102.9 and Flint Flon and the Paw online.com. Clear. The Wiscana Inn offers appetizing lunch selections, including the absolute burger made with pure Canadian. And you need uh, assists, you said? Cheddar cheese and their special homemade yep. sauce. For what? The Vauckler goal? Great selections, including the spicy. Uh, Luke Lepper. The Rubin plus breakfast items are available. Also, That's what it says on the website, yeah. To view their full menu and even order online. Located on Fisher Avenue here in DePauw, the Wiscana Inn. We can, we will. McDonald's and Flint Plum La Paz excited about the start of hockey season and hope you're enjoying the Battle of Northern Manitoba. McDonald's has your total day covered with delicious menu items including the Mighty McMuffin made with sausage and double the bacon. Add a cup of coffee and it's a perfect way to start your day. You can also stop by for lunch and supper and enjoy a delicious Big Mac, Quarter Pounder fries and all the other menu items you've known to come and love throughout the years. Don't forget to download the McDonald's app which allows you to collect points and receive great discounts. McDonald's and Flint Plum La Paz proud to support hockey in the north. Remax Parkland Realty is proudly and professionally represented by brothers Keith and Rich Yeager. They are here to serve northern Manitoba, including Flin Flon, Snow Lake, the Paw, Cranberry Portage, and anywhere in between. They provide all of the newest internet advertising opportunities, drone videos, and photos of your home and property, walkthrough videos of your home, and much more. If you have any questions about the Ten services seconds. available, give Rich or Keith of Remax Parkland Realty a call at 204-617-0707. Seven seven. You're on. Welcome to our first intermission. Uh, big news, of course, local product uh, Justin Lee's the worst kept secret in hockey. Worst kept secret in fun fun. We'll be playing with his hometown squad here this year. Let's start with that, Justin. Are, are you happy? You finally got all that red tape out of the way, and I can just focus in on doing what you do best. Yeah, for sure. It was a long summer, kind of waiting for it to be announced and just waiting for the season to get going. So, uh, yeah, really excited. It's here, and uh, you know the boys have been looking really good this past couple weeks at uh, camp and stuff. So. Really just looking forward to getting started. Are you getting frustrated with the process? Because I've never seen anything take this long. Usually when guys leave the Western League, it's usually automatic. This was a, a whole new one on me. Uh, yeah, for sure. It was, a, it was a long process. I mean, between deciding what I was going to do this year and then 
once I decided, you know, there's a process there, you know, paperwork and all that kind of stuff behind the scenes. But, uh, no, I just took my time, kind of enjoyed my summer. I was busy working and stuff. So, uh, yeah, just kind of got my mind off hockey a little bit, tried to have a good summer and uh, just ready to go now. So what made you decide you wanted to end your career here in Flin Flon? Uh, I mean, there's so many reasons. It's such a, such a historic franchise. And, you know, I grew up uh, coming to games here, watching, and I've always wanted to play here and, you know, be a bomber. So uh, there's that. And, you know, my brother's here. And it's my last year junior. So uh, just a re really special opportunity for me. And I couldn't turn it down. Seems like you had your mind made up a while ago. At the end of last year, were you kind of leaning towards doing this? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's been in the back of my mind for a while. The past couple of years, just thinking about that as a as an option. Uh, you know, once our season was over and I uh, I got traded there, then it really kind of starts to come together. And you know, I had to make a decision. So uh, yeah, happy with it so far. You know, it's been really good and just uh, ready to get going. Looking back at your Western Hockey League career, your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, it was re really good. Uh, four years for me in the Dub. You know, I learned a lot there, and I played with some amazing players. Met a ton of great guys that I'm going to be friends with forever. So, you know, it was uh, it was a great experience playing there, and uh, looking to look, looking forward to this year. One thing about the Western League, not only do you play with some of the best players, but you play against them. What was it like to play against Connor Bedard? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. We uh, we got to play him quite a bit there this year at the end in playoffs and stuff. Ended up you know, eliminating Regina. So that was uh, pretty special. I mean, the rings were all filled up, as everyone knows. So it was uh, it was a cool environment to play in, in front of, for sure. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, that's been one of the most hyped players probably since Connor McDavid. Yeah, he's uh, he's a special talent. So it was cool to be, be on the ice with him, for sure. You're a bomber now, Justin. I know you're looking forward. I'm a little nervous. Is this kind of old hand for you now playing these games? I mean, you played a lot of hockey, a lot of different levels, but something about putting on the, the sweater and playing here, of course, right here at home as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's something uh, special about putting on that jersey. So uh, I take pride in that. And, uh, you know, there's going to be pressure and there's going to be some nerves. But, uh, yeah, I've been I've been in these situations a lot, a lot before. So uh, I'm ready for I'm ready for the challenge. 20 year old, lots of hockey under your belt. What does the team expect from you? And what do you expect from yourself? Uh, I mean, lo lots of expectations for sure. I mean, I'd, uh, I'd like to be more of an offensive threat this year. You know, kind of bring that into my game more, but uh, still not not getting away from the power forward. Uh, you know, using my body, using my speed, using my shot, those kind of things is uh, what, what what you'll get from me out there. And uh, Mike kind of said, is he looking for you to score more? Is that one of the things that he wants from you? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, we've talked about that and kind of how my game can evolve this year and uh, switch my role. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. You've had a chance uh, to watch a couple deep playoff runs here the last few years. That must have made your decision a bit easier too i mean just seeing how electric this place is electric to begin with let alone the playoffs let alone league finals yeah absolutely it's a special place to play in and you know having a good team here definitely is what you know brought me here so uh yeah i want to win a championship and uh the the group we got here there's you know that's in the picture so we just got to put in the work and uh we'll see uh we'll we'll see where we end up at the end of the year I guess you had a bit of a small taste, but the COVID year you played a handful of games. Was that were you thinking that right then and there that, that you were thinking that maybe if opportunity presented itself, that did that kind of open the door for you a little bit too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, my my whole junior career was kind of in the back of my mind to come back here and play. So uh, yeah, it's such a such a special place and such a cool place to play uh, junior hockey. So I'm just re really excited to experience it. I know we're just getting ready for just the second preseason game, but what do you think of this team so far? Uh, really good team. You know, we got a deep, deep front end, deep back end. We got two really good goaltenders. So I think, uh, you know, as long as we gel together and we can build chemistry, uh, we're going to have a really good group. And the team looked like, at least from what I could see from camp, pretty fast and pretty big. Yeah, absolutely. We got uh, lo lots of quick, skilled players. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be lo looking to play fast. And, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it's one thing to play for your hometown team, like, like we mentioned, and to grow up watching it. And I imagine just uh, if you're going to end your current junior A, you might as well do it this way. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, such a cool opportunity. And, uh, yeah, I've said that many times. But, uh, yeah, just really looking forward to it. Being a bomber, it's, uh, it's something not everyone gets to uh, experience. And it's, uh, it's, it's a special thing. So I'm just happy that I can uh, experience it. i got to ask you this. I ask all guys. This will be interesting to get your response with so much under your belt. Biggest moment in hockey for you so far? What would that be? Uh, biggest moment so far in hockey. Uh, I'd say 
probably our playoff run last year in the dub. That was pretty special. You know, we were down in two series, ended up coming back and winning game seven. So I think that whole run as a whole, you know, with that group, uh, that team, it was such a special year. So I'd say that uh, that, that whole playoff run. Well, it was nice to see Saskatoon kind of bounce back. I haven't had a lot of playoff success the last few years. Yeah, no, it was a re really successful year for uh, the Blades. And, yeah, it was a great time there for sure. Listen, great to have you in a bomber uniform. Glad that we could finally announce it officially. Good luck tonight. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you very much. Justin Lees, our bomber profile here on the opening intermission on 102.9 CFER and FlintFlawnOnline.com. Clear. Northland Ford proudly supports the Flin Flon Bombers throughout the SJHL season. We know that the Bombers will play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 40 years. Northland Ford helped the community cheer on the Bombers as they work to bring a championship to the best fans in the league, and they provide you with the best selection on their lot. In the North, for the North, Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. When you pick up a controller, you start living a double life. I battle with friends. I raise animals and grow crops on my farm. I command a military fleet. Whether it's to escape everyday life. I commit Grand Theft Auto. Live out a dream. I race fast cars, expensive sports cars, or indulge in the fantasy. I'm a night elf druid that fights for the Alliance. What do you play? Xbox Series. 10 seconds. Nintendo Switch. PlayStation 5. PC. And where did you get that? Chains. 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 Watch. Listen. Play. Connect. You're wrong. Welcome back to Whitney Park. The two teams have made their way back in on the ice here tonight. And again, a dominant first period for the Flint Flon Bombers. But it was a dominant first period for the Bombers on Tuesday. But 24 to 7 the shots. And once again, uh, very good goaltending here tonight, courtesy of Lloyd Morin. Last time they started off and went back with Morin. They reversed this time. And boy, Morin, uh, I, I guess they got fooled by the first shot. But pretty tough to. Uh, Anything just derogatory to say about his play? He was pretty sharp. He was sharp, and you know, it's just the unfortunate thing about hockey sometimes, right? Like, you just get off to a, a, a rough start. Maybe your D just uh, didn't help you out as much as they should have, but uh, it's time to turn things up. You saw it on Tuesday. Hopefully, they can do the same thing tonight. And Wachler, a big part of the uh, opening period scoring, was out there right now, and he'll flip the puck back inside the Blizzard zone. Notice the Blizzard are really, uh, depending on the, the uh, tandem of Hamming and Boyce, they're out there a lot tonight. Hamming's got the puck right now for the Blizzard across the bomber line. That puck partially blocked. Picked up by Noah Hool. He'll play it off the board. That's grabbed by Silvestri. Up the right side. Chance for Lees. Out of his reach. Hamming goes in. Side up in the corner. Lees tried to dig it free. Took a pretty good body check. Boyce tries to get free as well. Trying to slow up uh, Walker a little bit. Silvestri in the corner. Bumped off the puck. Comes the blue line. Oh, it gets away here. From the D-man Bourgeois, he gives it away. Stolen that time by the Blizzard forward Langdon. Then Langdon gets hit hard in the corner, bounces right out front, and underneath the stick, the stick that time of C. With Bono clear back to center. There's a bounce pass, and looking for Ryder Muka as the puck will roll to the front of the Blizzard net and grabbed here by Morin. But uh, you can see that they're definitely trying to slow down uh, Silvestri. And Walker, a little bit more aggressive on the D here to start the period. And as they should, those guys have been killing it tonight. Really love seeing uh, Hamming on the ice a lot, though, right? Just, to, you know, building that connection with Boyce. Great to see. He was a great player for them last year. Really showed up on the stat sheet, especially come playoff time. He's a great like, player. Like I said, they're leaning on those two guys heavily so far in this game. When Fon will hold it in, there's a long shot. On top of the Blizzard net, Matt Egan. Some good moments in that opening period. Knocked away from him. Blizz come back. This is C. He'll flip it along the boards looking for Brady Krentz. Krentz, the big star on Tuesday night. Two big goals, including that power play goal with three seconds left. The second first spark the club. Able to come from behind. C will get it free. C back to that. Comes back up. But one timer drilled wide. Oh, a good hard low shot that time by Ward. Didn't miss by much. Good work here by the Blizzard top line. Trying to get them back in this game. Along the boards, that's Bouvier. He's pinned up. Flintflon works it free. It goes back to the bomber net. Picked up by Tanchuk. This is Egan. Wins the pass back up the right side. Grab that time by Sepp. The long shot. That got blocked. Was her back the other way? Here comes Sabrian. Shot up. Blocked at the blue line. Sabrian, one of the uh, players out of Quebec that was uh, brought in by uh, Eric Lacrosse. Flintflon back the other way. Liam Bridger down the right side. He'll carry the puck in deep. Throws it out front. Loose puck. 
opportunity there for Mueller, but he got stopped that time once again by Morin. Farmers continue with the pressure, but the move back to Blue Hut. The shot that time by Chow. Right pad save. Loose puck scooped up back of the blizzard net by Bernier. Bernier. Can't get a stick on it. Puck stays in deep. And this will force the blizzard back in their own net. That's Ward. His backhander just gets out. His Iwanis couldn't get a hold of it. He gets knocked to the ice. Blizzard going to the attack. in over the bomber line. Safrian. Couldn't go backhand the forehand. They'll take it away. Mueller the other way. Off the left side. Supreme gets it back as it hit a leg, but quickly loses it again. Chow took it, but then he gave it away right away. Intercepted by Allard. Allard brings the puck in deep already. I'm seeing adjustments by the Blizzard here in the second period. They're starting to block a lot of Flin Flon shots. And they're getting the puck deep inside Flin Flon territory. Mueller, though, will work it free. He's at center. Down the wing with Carroll. Carroll takes the pass. A shot. Kicked out again that time by Morin. Rebound scooped up in the corner by the Bombers. They try to circle it back out front. That's uh, Ander. When Juan holds it in. Ander can't get the shot away. Picked up instead by the Blizzards and fired off the boards that time by the D-man Whiteman. Whiteman misses the handle. Here's a chance for Flint Trying to get a chance and an opportunity that time by Ryder Muka. Had a goal against the Blizzard on Tuesday. Gets a chance there. And has had a couple good opportunities in this game. You can tell that uh, some of the problems that they had in that first period, they were definitely addressed in the locker room. I mean, these uh, these Blizzard players right now have really turned things up when it comes to playing defense, playing good offense, getting some shots on goal. Though it doesn't really show up on the shot clock here. But they've been better. They've been more gritty in yes. the second period. Yes, you can really tell. 16-22 to go second period. Face up inside the Blizzard zone. Carroll falls down. Gets the puck back to Noah Hull. At the blue line. His long shot. Hit somebody in front. Rebound picked up. They can't put it in. Oh, a couple big saves. They do jam that one in. As it gets loose out front. And David Anders going to put it home. But I'll tell you what. Morin made two or three big saves. Nobody picked up Ander out front. He'll go five hole. And football makes it a three nothing game. But boy, didn't help the goalie out there much. Yeah, they, got, they really, really, really got to address that. Either in the next period, during the next break, or during practice in these next couple of weeks because they got to help out their goalie a little bit defensively. And they're left alone out front. And finally, they get a puck pass for him. 30th shot of the game for Flint Flon. And we still have 46 minutes remaining in this game. Off the face, off the Blizzard storm back. Zagari's shot gets blocked. Puck picked up in the corner. Bombers will work it free. This is Lees. Lees at his own blue line. Feeds it back to Bourgeois. Bourgeois in over the Blizzard line. Trying to come back up the boards that time to Walker. Intercepted that time by Boyce, and the Blizzard has something going. This will pick up the puck at center. Flipped it over the line that time by Zagari. He had a guy wide open in front that was Edwards. Didn't see him. Flip on intercepts. Walker down the wing. Slicing after him that time was the big D-man Hamming. Missed him with the check, and Walker will carry the puck in. Lee's trying to get set up. Picked it up in the corner. Couple nifty moves by Lee's. The right point to Hool. Hool's got it. Hangs on. Throws it in the corner. Bombers trying to chip it back of the net. Boyce has got a hold of his guy. Dug free, though, by Silvestri. First shot got blocked. Loose puck intercepted by Edwards and put back to the Bomber blue line where Laughlin waited for it. Laughlin feeds that one back into the Blizzard line as they're trying to get something going here with the youngster Stanglin. He can't knock it down. Tantuck gets over there. He gets a shot away. Kicked out that time by Morin. Blizzard kind of running around inside their own zone here. Flint Flon putting the pressure on. They can't clear it out. Comes back to blue line. Quick shot again by Laughlin into the glove, and Morin's got it. Shots in this period are 8 to 1 in favor of Flint Flon. So just a one shot by the Blizz so far in the second period. You no, know, if there's one thing the Blizz have to do right now is put their blinders on and really just not worry about the shot clock. Not, well, not worry about the around scores. a little bit again. Yeah. They were able to contain the speed a little bit. Oh, they win this face off. They got three guys away quickly. Here they come storming up the ice, led by Krentz. Krentz is the number one line there of Krentz, uh, C, and Bouvier. So we'll see if they can get something going. Speaking of Bouvier at center, he gets knocked down by Egan and puts it back across the bomber line. Puck bounced off the board. Closer gets to it. Brady Krentz at center will chip it back inside. Flint Flon territory. He'll go off for a change, and Laughlin will pick up the puck at the side of the bomber net. This is Laughlin. 
Pass intercepted. Good job that time. Picked off by De La Salle. De La Salle throws it in deep. It goes back to the bomber net. C is still in there. The other two guys from his line change, but he remains in there. Trying to pit up the puck deep inside the Flin Flon zone. And they'll blow it down with 14.49 to go. A 3 up the clip one lead. A goal here by the youngster, Ander. As he scores, as he's able to get a, a puck shovel through the legs. Uh, Morin, who didn't have a lot of help there. There's one thing I'm really noticing right now. T.T. Laughlin, he's getting a lot of minutes. Really trying to... Well, I think they want to make sure he's game shape yeah. right to start the season. Like I said, virtually a rookie coming in with that injury early in the year last year. Here's Bueller. Knocked it down at center. Runs over the official, but gets the puck back in. Bridger will follow up. He gets a quick shot away. Save me. Chow holds it in. Bouncing puck. He'll send it deep in the zone. Picked off this time by Ciprian. Ciprian the center. Pinned up by Mueller. Gets it free. And scooped up at center ice this time by Ciprian again. Ciprian been in one there. Better looking forward tonight. Never gives up on a play. That one, though. Will go up in the blizzard bench. Will blow it down. Ciprian, like you said. Brought in from uh, Triple A, tri Triple A uh, U18 League. Out of Quebec. We played... Uh, with a couple college teams the last couple of years, so he brings a little bit of a pedigree. No, he's a great player, and you can really tell that he's just trying to get his boundaries, his boundaries when it comes to this uh, OCN team, this Blizzard team, pardon me. Face off outside the Bomber Blue Line. The Bombers jump on it. Aiden Chow looking good out there tonight. Feeds that one back to a leper, and the puck is flipped back inside the Blizzard zone, and again, it's Hamming racing back of the net. He got bumped off the play. Bombers turn it back to Chow at the right point. He'll quickly dish it off to Leper. Leper makes a good move, hangs on to it, brings it inside the zone. Leper hanging on, throws it out front. Puck loose. Moore tried to follow it. He'll grab it on a major scrum in front of him. And Leper showing us a little shake and bake there. Pretty good move along the boards. He, he got it. You could tell that he wanted to shoot it right away. Then he realized, wait a second, I might be able to make something happen here. And he did. He did. But uh, you know what? It's just, it's, it's time for the the Blizz to really make something happen. I know I keep saying that, but just looking at their shot clock, 34 to 8. I mean, they just can't get any sustained pressure in the can. offensive zone. Bombers win the draw. They hold it in. Leper along the boards. Try to get that one over to Muka, who's had some good chances tonight. Muka had that one knocked away when the Bombers lost the stick. It's Leper. Muka gets it back, and they'll flip it in. Hamming knocked it down midair. Out there with the other veteran, Boyce, up where he dishes the puck off. Boyce takes a look. He'll skate with it up the ice. Feeds it back to Hamming. Hamming at center. Sends it inside the Flin Flon zone. Bouncing puck. Bean got a piece, but back of the goal left it there for Leper. Outside the zone. Off the skate that time of Muka. Blizzard get it back. Ball oh, pass up the left side. A good one. Edwards knocks it down. He'll carry the puck in. Chips it back to the goal. Chance out front. And they can't pull it. It goes over like a stick. Held in that time. But then fired over top of the boards by Brett Ward. But their best scoring chance is in the second period. Nice opportunity by Langdon, but just over top of his stick. And that was the chance there. If he gets it on his tape, I don't know if the goalie knew where he was. He gets a good shot away. Very well could have got him on the board. That's what they need more of, though. You know, it's, uh, you know, 13 seconds, 13 minutes left, pardon me, in this period. Time to take more shots like that one. Was it when the pace stop inside the offensive zone? They'll fire that off the side of the bomber net. LeBlanc gets it back, goes to Vestry. That one got blocked. Blizzard hold it in. Puck hits a stick, comes back to center. Grabbed quickly by Walker. He's away. Walker tried to feed that one back to Silvestri. Got wrapped up along the boards. Comes out front. They can't shoot it. Leaves was there. Silvestri back of that. Got checked that time by Cook. Cook will get a hold of it. Swings the pass out. Off the skate that time of Langdon. And the puck floats back in the flint flon zone. No hole there to get it. Back up the middle, good pass to Walker. Quickly dishes it off to Silvestri. To the trainer, Lee's off his skate. Can't knock it down cleanly. And intercepted this time by Zagari. Zagari moves that one ahead to Riley C at center. Here comes Riley C. Poked it inside the, uh, the Bombers. Oh, what a big pickup from Sherwood Park. He played with the Red Lake Miners of the SIJHL last year. So they're hoping they can get some offensive production out of Riley C this season. Went one back the other way. Opportunity scores! Off the post and in. A picture perfect shot by Trevor Stenglin. And he just simply was out there. His line mate changed. He picked up the puck. He moved across the blue line. 
and Stenglin, a nice shot off the post and in. Four nothing Bombers. You know, I just I think this Blizzard team really just needs to work on their connections a little bit. Not not off the ice, but just on the ice, right? Like it's a it's a whole new cast of uh, of players here. A lot of these guys, yeah, they played before with each other, but you know, in a real game scenario like we're seeing right now. I think it's just, you know, back to the drawing boards and just, you know, working a little bit. And it looks like we're getting a goalie Yeah, game, Morin right? will come out. He gave up four goals on 35 shots. But I'll tell you what, he played really, really he good. Did. He did. So four goals on 35 shots for Morin. And he'll uh, be replaced here by Offen, who was a big story for them on Tuesday night. Looks like Bain's going to stay in there for Flint Flon. They get the announcement on the Bomber goal is the Blizzard bring the puck in eight. Down Chuck. And Egan. Get the assist on the fourth Flint Flon goal. Bombers have the puck again as they'll carry it in over the Blizzard zone. That's Cohen Semp ran out of room, but got it right back out. The Tadchuk walk again. That one hit a body, went over top of the Blizzard. Then again, they're scrambling. They get the puck out. C plays that back to Krentz, and he's tired. He wants to get off. And Flint Flon will get it back. At center ice, Cohen Semp can't knock it down. Blizzard have it. That's the young D-man, McCorster. He'll play it ahead, bouncing puck. Scooped up here by De La Salle. Feeds it back out front that time. And the puck hit a skate right back down the ice it goes. And here comes the Blizzard net miner, Osman, racing out of his own net. For Boyce, the veteran D-man. And quickly they move that one ahead to Supreme. Supreme can't find the handle. Puck flipped off the glass back inside the football on zone. Supreme will chase after it. He also had uh, Bernier circling in front of the net. That's another thing. They haven't been able to find the forward solution in front of the net as well. There's a chance for the blue line part on target by Boyce. Easily turned aside by the bomber netminder uh, Bain. Just a second save of this second period. And that one from well out. So not a lot of offensive traffic. Puck will roll inside the bomber net. Bain's got it. He hangs on. And at the midway point of the game there, Mike, uh, 10.25 to go. 35-9. The shots in Flintflon's favor. And here comes a goaltending change. We will see the number one net miner, Harmon Laser Hume. He does come in. You know, it's worth getting some reps for uh, for goal right now. I mean, listen, the, the Bombers, though, need to take advantage. The, the, the Blizzard, part of me, need to take advantage of this goalie change. Maybe, uh, you know, soften Laser Hume up a little bit and see if uh, they can get some shots in. Well, that's the one thing they got to do. They got to get the puck. They got to get some shots. They got to get some traffic in front of them. But they got to have the puck to do all that, right? Mm -hmm. Back on their heels a little bit here again in the second period. They had a good start, I thought, but Flintflon's picked it up. Liam Bridger. Quick pass up the right side to Mueller. Broke it up that time by Hamming. Bombers flip it right back in. Boyce knocked it down. He's got it. His Boyce tried to thread the needle. Intercepted by Mueller. He's got Bridger. Bridger knocked out. Picked up by Mueller. They try to feed it back out front that time. It'll make its way to the blue line. Leper will hold it in. Along the boards, he won it, fires it in. Back in the blizzard net, Flintflon works it to the point to Aiden Chow. Knocked it down, sent it right back in deep. Left for at the point, holds it in, into the corner. Mueller knocking away a couple of blizzard players and throws it back out front to Chow. Won't shoot it. Here's Leper's drive. Blocked that time. Nice job. Because that was blocked here by Allard, and the blizzard will get the puck back to center. Flintflon quickly gets it back, though. Aiden Chow inside his own zone. Wholesale change by the blizzard. We'll see if they can... Get some fresh legs out there. Puck set back inside the Blizzard zone. And Einstein called against Flintflon is Hamming. Will ride his guy into the uh, boards back of the net. I think there was Cohen Semp. He wasn't too happy about that. But they'll blow it down with 9.21 to go. And our base off back inside the Flintflon zone. Harmon Mason Hume. Now between the pipes, the number one goalie from last year. As good a number as anybody in the first half of the season, like I said, was absolutely electric in that series win against the Humboldt Broncos. And, of course, uh, the big moments of that Estevan series, it was a lot tougher than I think Flintflon thought it was going to be, getting into the seventh game and having to win it on a fluky goal off the partition. But, well, that seems like literally yesterday. And here we are. We've had a fantastic summer on a beautiful day today. And we're back at the rink. Media timeout. We'll take a break. 9.16 to go. Midway point of the hockey game. Bombers in charge. 4 nothing here on 102.9. And Flintflon in the paw. Online.com. Clear. It's never been this easy to sure. fill your prescription. Head to superthrifty.com, click RX Refill, choose your local Super Thrifty Pharmacy, fill in your information. We'll have your prescription ready when you need it. Online refills at superthrifty.com. We care about making things easy for you. Super Thrifty. We care. 
Bentley Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, and the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Family owned and operated with experiences in the north, visit Homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. You're up. And we are back at the Whitney Forum. Midway point of the hockey game, a face-off inside the football zone. Harmon Laser Hume still waiting for his first shot of the game. As uh, Ryan Bain got the start, stopped all 10 shots fired in his direction. None really of a difficult level, I don't think. I think he was way more under siege than that game in the Paw on Tuesday night. But plenty of hockey to go. Look out, a big hit the board that time. Dawson Carroll took his guy Edwards down hard. He hauls him to the ice here. Penalties might be handed out here as... like a bit of a confrontation there in the corner, but it uh, doesn't look like anything's going to happen. I thought Carroll took him down a little bit heavily, but... A little bit of a rusty take definitely down there. shake it up as he makes his way off the ice. Marlon Edwards, a big pickup from the Winnipeg Wild. One of their top uh, list guys that they brought in. Very excited about what he's going to bring to the table this year and hopefully many more years to come. Here's Hulu at center. Racing down the ice, back across the Blizzard line. Lost the handle on the board. Picked up instead and flipped out that time by Krentz. Along the boards. Knocked down by Ward. He tried to pin it up here. Pocket center. Riley C. will pop it inside the flin flon zone. And he'll race down on the bomber defenseman Bourgeois. The blue line. Long shot. Picked out that time by Laser Hume. A good shot that time by Ward. Had a little mustard on it. Rebound picked up by Bouvier. Trying to come back out front to Krentz. Intercepted. But held in by Ward. A little pressure here by the Blizzard finally inside foot flood territory. Bombers do get it out though. And Ward will chase it down in center. Now he's got some room. He'll take off with it. Flip it back in foot flood territory. No rule there. Along the boards to Sem. Sem plays it ahead to Vockler. Vockler a good game here tonight. Puck rolled away from him. He'll get it right back. Tried to jam it in. Off the side of the net. And picked up this time by Whiteman. Whiteman along the boards. Once again, it's Sagiri. Or Supreme, pardon me. And probably the best Blizzard forward tonight. Shot fired on. Kicked away that time by Laser Hume. And Lees tried to get the loose puck. Kicked back to center. Picked up by Silvestri. In on the Blizzard line, but he puts himself outside. And they'll blow it down again with seven and a half to go in the second period. 35-10. The shots in favor of Flintstone. And again, a 4 nothing lead. Silvestri and Bockler, uh, the veterans... Uh, Scoring in the opening period, and the, the rookie is uh, Ander and uh, Stanglin have scored the two goals here so far in the second period. Yeah, looking at that current lineup right now, looking at having to maybe make something happen here. Maybe uh, Peyton Allers, he had a great game on Tuesday as well. Palmers win the faceoff. Down to Cheddar, a long shot. Nowhere near the net, picked up by Hamming. He'll drop it back of the goal to Boyce. He'll move it ahead. Here's the pass to center, picked up quickly by Dallas Fowl. Throws it in back of the goal that time. McMullen took a big hit. Comes back to Bula. And there's a shot right on target that time by handing an easily gloved here by Laser Hill. And he'll make the save and hang on. So a few more shots by the Blizzard. But that's one of those opportunities again when they hope he gets going in front of the net and maybe get a redirection or maybe get a screen. They can't keep their, they got to keep their foot on the gas. Oh, sorry, I should say. But uh, looks like it's uh, seven minutes left here. Huge more shots on goal. Let's see if they can get a few more. Blizzard win the faceoff. Hauled down in the faceoff that time was McMullen. It's a Blizzard bench, but it wanted a bit of a call there. Flip gets the puck back. Tamsha with uh, McMullen on top of him. Sofa got Kuvale in there helping him out. Good work by these guys in the corner. Kuvale picked up along the board. McMullen in there as well. Puck comes in front of the bomber net. Lays him not taking any chances. He'll pounce right on that and hang on again with 6.47 to go. One thing that OCA, or one thing the Blizzard have done is they've slowed the pace down there a little bit. They have. No, they actually, they absolutely have, and that's uh, that's through the conditioning. They, they are a very well-conditioned team, and uh, you can see it on the ice, not only tonight, but you saw it on Tuesday as well. Off the face, off right back. There's a chance over top of that. A good hard snap shot by Ward, and again, that's what they need. You win the face off cleanly, you get it back to the defenseman, and there was some traffic in front that time, and Ward... You can see maybe a little bit of frustration as he had a really good opportunity there. 
Bombers win the draw. They'll come back. Here's the stretch pass down the left side as they will lead in Stegland, who has the fourth Bomber goal. He's with Egan. They'll move it to the blue line. Leopard can't hold it. Look out. A partial break here for Langdon. Trying to get free, but knocked away by Chow. Again, it took a funny hop. Came right back inside the Bombers' zone. Chow trying to spin away from traffic off the glass. Buck rolls to center. Hammered back in by Cook on target. Easy save. Laser Hume. He'll give way to Leper. Leper a good move. Here he is at his blue line to center. Up the left side for Egan. He'll pick it up inside Blizzard territory. Along the boards, he's pinned up there, trying to work it free. Chow pitched in, got it ahead. Picked up by Semp, and he'll put the puck back in the Blizzard net. And that's knocked down here by Ward, who had that really good chance moments ago. Bounced it off the board. Blizzard trying to move it ahead. They do. Oh, they'll bring it right back in. Hit a leg, came back across the Blizzard line, picked up here by Iwanis, and his shot sails over top of the Blizzard net. Bridger back in the goal, trying to make something happen. Leper at the blue line, back to Chow. Long shot, knocked down in front. That ends up taking Ward down, who's been out there for a long time. They can't get a whistle, I'm sure, quick enough for him. Ward does grab the puck, and he's going to get it off the glass. It's going to be an icing call. He's not going to be able to change again, unfortunately. He's going to have to stay out there, but he's been out there a long time. So far, I just think these guys need to realize, you know, it's only preseason, lots to learn here, but, uh, you know, don't take your foot off the gas. You know, it's just, it's a lesson learned. You know, there's still plenty of hockey left. We're not acting like it's over, but it's it's time to really just, you know, hone in and just work on the craft a little Brett bit. Brett Ward been out there a ton of time. We see if they can get the puck out. Flintstone holds it in. Noah Hull at the blue line. Back to Bourgeois. Shot didn't miss by much. That sails were top of the blizzard net. And I'll tell you right now, Austin never saw it. The pressure again by the Bombers. Five minutes to play here in the second period. The puck finally comes out. Picked up at center ice by Edwards. Flipped back across the line. Dual back. Can't pick it up, but grabbed instead here by Carroll. Brings the pass back to Hool. Hool at center. Nice give and go. Dawson Carroll a shot. That got blocked that time in front of the blizzard net by Cook. They'll get the attack going the other way. Here's the pass. They feed up to Riley C. Riley C. tried to catch up with it, but knocked away in the corner. Got a little bit of assistance that time by Della Salle. Della Salle take it out hard in the corner, back of the bomber net, but brings away from traffic. Good work by him. Those are feet are keep moving, so they're working hard here on this ship. Della Salle once again battling against Carroll. He falls down. Again, the Blizzard are going to get a penalty here, or power play here. As they're waiting for that one. And great work by Dallas Stout along the boards there. And because of his hard work, he gets the Bombers to take a penalty. Boarding call coming up. Maybe this is the spark they need. Hopefully. Well, hard work's a big thing, right? Absolutely. That's one thing they don't lack here on this for this Blizzard team. But uh, hopefully they can uh, make some magic happen and put one in. So a penalty going to be handed out here to uh, Bourgeois. That'll be a boarding call. And a chance maybe for a little bit of momentum here late in the second period. 4-10 to go, 4-0 Flintstown leads it, and just the, the third power play of the game, and it's not really, a lot more physical in the paw on Tuesday, right? No, truly, truly, those young bucks were at each other's throats. But you haven't seen a lot of big hits in this game at all. Bouvier out there to take the face off, Blizzard trying to get on the board, they'll get it to the point, held in by Hamming. Hamming has got it, Bouvier, top of the circle, back of it, oh, front to Chris, a chance! He gets a couple whacks, laser hoop to save, the puck is loose. And look out, now we're seeing some physical play. Bouvier, somebody grabs a hold of him. And Krentz gets tackled in front of that. He's battling for that loose puck. And he gets a couple of chances. And Laser will be able to hold him at bay. More penalties coming up here, Mike? You really saw it at the end of the first period. I mean, things were starting to get a little bit chippy. You know, a little bit of pushing and shoving. And, uh, I mean, the blizzard are obviously frustrated. Another penalty being handed out here. Is, uh, is Lee's taking a penalty? I think he has. So Justin Lee's makes his way to the penalty box. Is this going to be a five-on-three here? Oh, there we go. Yes, it is. It's a five-on-three here for the blizzard. So a great opportunity for them. Lee's must have been the guy that yanked on Krentz and took him down hard in front of the uh, bomber net. And let's not forget here, this Blizzard team last year were great during the power play. Looking at guys like Sebastian Hamming, he was fantastic as well when it comes to putting these points on the board and taking advantage. 3.56 to go and new development here, boys. The Blizzard, for, forget about, well, I guess you're going to get that first goal. Might be able to strike a couple of times during the last couple of minutes. And this is the time to do it. I mean, this, I this is the opportunity that's presented itself for sure. 
time to take advantage, and hopefully, you know, these guys are kind of looking. Oh, they look took the second penalty off, and another guy, yeah, he's taking somebody in the box with him. Krentz is going to go as well. And initially it looked like a five on three. They put the second penalty up there. But this is bad news for the Blizzard, too, because Krentz is the guy you want out there for the power play. No, exactly. A, an offensive weapon for yeah. the Blizz. So it's four on four now. Or sorry, it'll be five on four. It'll remain a power play for the for the Blizzard because the coincidental minor to uh, the Lees and Krentz, a couple of Northern Manitoba boys, as Rondo wins the face off. And Edwards will try to pick up this puck deep in the flip one zone, knocked away from him, and flip one gets it out as it gets past Hamming, who got the stick out there, but just kind of missed it. And Hamming will go back to pick it up, back to his own net. And Hamming will set up the Blizzard power play from there. A minute 25 to go in the power play. Three and a half remaining here in the second period. This is Hamming at center. In over the bomber line, that's offside. Unfortunate for him, Edwards gets over the line, loses his footing, goes down. And they'll blow that one down with 325 remaining in the second. Shot's getting a little bit tighter at 35-14 now in football's favor. Marlon Edwards, he's, uh, you can tell he's frustrated as well. He did not like that, mad at himself, but uh, it's okay. you got to shake it off and just uh, wait for the next play. Tagari takes uh, the face off here, just outside the bomber blue line against Iwanis. Those are grabbing. At center ice, it's Riley C. hammering it inside the flip-flop zone. Leper there. Gets a hold of it. Here's a quick pass to Iwanis. Iwanis has got it in center. One-on-one -on -one here, working against Cook to the left side. Inside the Blizzard zone, he puts it back to Leper, but he's not there. Puck down the ice. Here comes Laser. He'll bracing after it. Off the glass. A good play. Flip-flop gets it back to center, but stolen that time by Sigari. Goes it back inside the Blizzard zone. It's grabbed here by Cook. Back over to Sigari. Inside Flintflon territory. Sigari throws it back in the net. Trying to get free off the board. Just gets off the stick that time. But Cook comes back to Blizzard side of center. He'll feed that over to Sigari. Back to Cook. Cook's got it. 24 seconds to go in the power play. Blizzard trying to get back in Flintflon territory. Sigari's got it. Just inside the blue line in the front of the net. Tried to flip that over to Saprian, but knocked away, set down the ice, and Osman comes out, knocks it down, leaves it back in the goal. That's when the Blizzard will take over. Cook has got it. Just seven seconds to go in the power play. Quickly hands it over to Boyce. Boyce to center. Rims it around the boards inside the flip one zone. Knocked down back of the goal. Laser Hume didn't see McMullen there, and he almost knocked it away. Penalty over. Flip one back on the attack. Semp takes the drop pass, a little bit behind him, couldn't get it cleanly. Poole will hold it in. Left side, Bourgeois shot, his quick wrister goes wide again. Back to five aside, OCN 0 for 2 on the power play. Flintflon continues to hold it in. Right hand board, deep in Blizzard territory. Pinned up along the boards that time. It's Muka. He throws it back out front to Carroll. Carroll, to the blue line. Knocked down by Bourgeois, feeds it over to Hool. Back to Bourgeois. From the point, a long shot. Knocked down in front. Never made it through to the goaltender. Nailed in front instead, or knocked down in midair that time by Whiteman. This one again holds it in. We're going to say somebody hit it with a glove pass. They'll blow it down. 119 remaining in the second period. Big treat coming up for the second intermission. Gatlin Church, the head coach, GM, the CEO of the PBCM Selects up here. For the intervention, of course, this team's camp happened this weekend. Second year in the Keystone Junior Hockey League. It's always interesting to hear what Gatlin has to say. <laughs> Absolutely. He'll join us here in the second intermission tonight. Bombers win the faceoff looking for more. They're up 4-0. But it kind of, uh, have they taken their foot off the gas pedal, do you think, a little bit here? And look out, we got a Blizzard player hurt here. Yeah. That this is uh, Ward. He took a big hit, and he's... Uh, holding his arm as he makes his way to the blizzard bench. Iwanis will bring it in. Hopefully he's okay. It looks like he's just shaken up. Cool, a good move at the blue line. Hangs on his shot. Deflected wide that time by Mueller. Got a stick on it. Again, the blizzard trying to wave off a late bomber charge here in the dying seconds of the second period. Buck scooped up. Sent out by McCorster, but knocked down. Flint will hold it in. Buck laying back of the blizzard net. Trying to get a hold of it that time with Sigari. He does get to it. He'll flip it off the boards. Back inside the football zone. Racing after that time was Langdon. Langdon stood up in the corner that time by Bourgeois. Langdon comes out. Centers it out front. Nobody there. Bouvier tried to get there and 
He'll race in after the back, tries to pin it down, but Flintsblong gets it back to center. Now the puck flipped back inside the Flintsblong zone. Houle knocks it down. Got it back to Bourgeois. This is Houle. Houle takes the look. Back to center. Puck skips to the Blizzard blue line. Picked up that time by Whiteman and sent back in Flintsblong territory. Bourgeois been out there a long time. That's the deal for the second period tonight. And again, uh, after it seems like after the Blizzard made the goalie change, they kind of settled down a little bit and kind of Flintsblong wasn't as freewheeling as they were earlier in the game. Going back to that big hit there, I mean, that was Bridger, and he's been having a sneaky good game as well. A lot of, a lot of good sneaky oh, shots on goal, and again, that big hit. Hopefully, Ward's okay. He was on the other end of that uh, that big hit. Looks like he was wincing a little bit, but uh, again, hopefully all is well, because he's been really showing out, not only uh, today, but on Tuesday as well. The Bombers had a couple more for their efforts. A 4 nothing lead after two. We'll take a break. Second intermission show straight ahead. The Battle of Northern Manitoba continues here on 102.9 and with Juan and the Paw online.com. So, Claire, you're getting new furniture. You know, I know a guy. My uncle's co-worker's dog walker's brother owns a store. Uh, seven for the period. Do a great deal on anything. You just got to pay shipping, sure. handling, overseas transit, and it'll probably take five months. Um, I'll just go to Creighton's Furniture and Appliance Center. Yeah, but I know this guy. Yeah, but I know Creighton's Furniture and Appliance Center. They have a great selection of sofas, sectionals, love seats, and more. Plus, they'll assemble it, deliver it, all for a great price, and they're just five minutes away. Yeah, you're probably right yeah i know creighton furniture and appliance center 688-7587 so and michael's corner store the place with so much going on you have dozens of reasons to be there with optimum points and so benefits it's where you fill your gas tank and drive through car wash well it's the only one in the region robin's donuts for coffee donuts and everything in between pizza hut express hot and ready when you are with their signature pizza hut crust convenience items travel needs vehicle needs mid-trip stop the list goes on and on see you at the esso michael's corner store gordon avenue in the paw with robin's drive through pizza hut express and so much more Nothing makes you feel more at home than a belly full of delicious food. And at Chicken Chef, they do exactly that. Make you feel at home. From the signature chicken and tasty pizza to fresh salads, yummy sandwiches, and hot soups, they always satisfy your appetite. And with new delicious specials every day, there's all 10 seconds new for you to try. And what's a good meal without one of their decadent desserts? Fully licensed and fully delicious Chicken Chef, where it always feels like home. Here on. And we're back here at the Whitney Forum. Once again, a 4 nothing Flint Flon lead. Uh, again, it was 2 nothing on goal for Sylvester and Walker, the veterans. And it was the young guys, like we mentioned, came out in the second period. Andrew gets a goal, 342 in. And then uh, Stanglin, and again, uh, just some tremendous stops there by Moore, who was fantastic here tonight. He faced 30 shots in 30 minutes of work. I uh, had a couple opportunities, a couple whacks. He finally was able to jam it in at the 806 mark as uh, Tanchuk and Egan will get assists on that one. didn't get assists on the the under goal, but we'll get those momentarily. Uh, shots of that period, a little bit tighter. 14-7 in Flint Flon's favor, but uh, well in front after 40 minutes of play there, Mike. 38-14, to 14, but I did notice, like I said, I don't know if it's a coincidence or what it is, but after the blizzard changed goalies, they, the pace did slow down, and they were able to kind of stop the Bombers freewheeling a little bit. Yeah, you know what? I just think Jack Osmond, you know, he, you know, he had his a little bit of rest there on the bench, but uh, I, th I just think he's a, a little bit more of an anchor, especially when it comes to these uh, last few minutes in the second period. But, uh, you know, not to take away from Morin, he's been uh, he's been great so far, and there's really only so much he can do. I mean, defensively, the Blizzard re just really weren't help helping him out as much. And, uh, you know, you, you saw spurts a little bit when it comes to their offense. I mean, so, like, when they have those moments, they look great. Yeah, they, they had some, a they, they, little bit more pressure. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, and they got the puck back to blue line a couple of times. They got some shots, but you got to get some traffic in front of Laser Hume. Be interesting to see what happens with Brett Ward. He took that big hit down in, in behind the net and was shaking up a little bit. They can't afford to lose him. No, no, he's been great, great, not only on Tuesday, but tonight as well. And that was a heck of a hit from Bridger. But uh, you know what? I, I, I truly think when it comes to this Blizzard team, these guys just need to get used to each other. And uh, luckily they have, uh, you know, the, the last period of this game and the next two games against the Swan Valley Stampeders to really just hone in and kind of, you know, figure out each other's tendencies and uh, hopefully that, you know, Coach LeBros can make some adjustments and, uh, you know, this can be a really good uh, uh, offensive unit and defensive unit as well. And Mike Pitzlick has made his way back to the booth. We'll see what the Blitz are doing here in the third period. I think I always, I mean, again, I'm not a, a coach or anything, but I always kind of look at it when you're down in the game, 
at least try and come out and win that final period. Something to strive for. Yeah, you know, you can never give up, especially when it comes to this team and Eric Labrosa's uh, coaching philosophy. But if there's one thing that really sticks out right now, Brett Ward is back on the ice. Looks like he's doing That's all good right. News. Yeah, he was just shaking up there. It's not a guy holding his shoulder like that. You always kind of fear the worst, don't you? Absolutely. Tuck and flip back at the bomber. It's all picked up by Hull back in the net. On the boards, that's Lees. And that one looks like it hit somebody on the bomber bench. It does. They'll blow that down with 1943 to go just underway in the third period here tonight. Four different goal scorers for the bombers. Sylvester, Bachler, Ander, and Stanglin. I've done the damage tonight. The first one's a goal tender. More and boy, 30 shots. Yeah. He got and some good reps in. His counterpart's only had to come up and make eight saves, so... Like I said, since the goaltending changed, we've got to settle down and slow the pace down a little bit. They got a chance again. There's Bouvier shot. That got blocked. And Flip on Clifty will skate it out. Here comes the speedy Bachler to center. Try to go around the D man. Back out front. There's a chance by Silvestri. Off the shoulder and off the plexiglass. Bombers hold it in. Blue line. Noah Hull's long shot over top of the net. Puck intercepted here by Krentz. But he gave it away pretty quickly. Knocked away at center ice by Hull. He'll tap it back in. That's the Blizzard D-man, Cook. Cook's got it. Played that one ahead here. On the tape to Edwards. Edwards tries to fight off the check and knocked away from him. Bombers back the other way. Silvestri at center. Lost the handle. Buck rolled over to Hamming. Got blocked. Comes back deep inside the Blizzard zone. And to be careful, played it along the board. Laughlin pinching in. He'll keep it deep inside Blizzard territory. Now it gets back. Set back down the ice. And there's Matt Egan after it. Hanshuk can't pick up the pass. Edwards. Knocked away. Matt Egan back the other way. He'll poke it ahead. Catch up with it. Got somebody cutting to the front of the net. It's Cohen Sepp. Sepp's in there. Can't pick up the pass. Great effort by Matt Egan down the wing. Hanshuk holds it in. Now he loses it. Opportunity for Zagari. Looks offside there, but the Blizzard will fire it in. Laser Hume out of his net. Oh, almost a giveaway there off the tip of the stick. That time of Zagari. Egan back the other way. Had step with him. He got tripped up there. He took Egan down. Back the other direction. This is Saprian. Knocked away. Egan still out there. Poked it back across the blizzard line. They get it right back. That's the veteran demon hamming up the right side too far that time for De La Salle. And blown down with 17.55 to play in the third period. Still 4-0 football. You know, hopefully they can at least maybe put a, a point on the board, right? See what happens after that. They can at least get something there. Might be the spark they need. Face off in the blizzard zone to the right of the goaltender, Osman. Right back to the blue line. Leper shot. That one goes wide of the mark. Fielder after it. Rebound. Knocked down in front of the goal that time by Hamming. Hamming has got it. Played it ahead. Just to center. Flint one back on top. But here comes uh, Iwanis. He's looked good tonight. Beats his guy to the outside. Gets it out front. Good save, Osman. He won us down the right side, flipped it right back out front, and great opportunity that time for Liam Bridger couldn't put her home, and then Iwanis gets pancaked from the blizzard. That creates a little bit of a fair fluffle. A bow now with 17.32 to go. Uh, Iwanis uh, showed us a couple signs on some uh, good uh, breakaway speed. Oh, truly, truly. He's a special player. Really been showing out tonight. Face off back inside the blizzard zone. Puts one in front, 4 nothing. Looking for more. Iwanis taking the face off this time against Kubelay. And the puck will make its way to the front of the, the uh, blizzard net. Now we got some pushing and shoving. Mueller getting into it here. Not sure what number that is, so it looks like it's... I thought it was actually Ward, but it's not. Looks like uh, number number eight, yeah. Whiteman. They tangle up a little bit in the corner, but that's quickly rectified. There's one positive. I mean, man, oh, man, the blizzard have been great when it comes to the faceoff. Yeah, they've been dominant in that area tonight. Flip one wins this one. Mueller ran out of room, picked up back of the goal that time by Cook. Off the glass, the puck set back inside the Flip one zone. Chow got a hurry. And it's an icing call as he had McMullen barreling in after him. McMullen playing at the U17 AAA Wheat King program last year. But he'd be a high end player that they brought in. And that we'll do it all again. And that 23 looks good on him. Gouvele will line up for the face stop here against the Bombers. Dawson Carroll. 
Off the faceoff, Carroll after it, back of the blizzard net, but Nick Mullen got a hold of it, took a good body check, couldn't clear it out. Now it's poked the blue line, held in that time. Well, the blizzard get it right back again, now they'll chip it right back down the ice. Race for the puck, trying to break it up as Leper, as he gets back inside his own zone, played it ahead to Chow at center. Chow gives way over to Ander, who's got a goal in this game. Dropped that back to Seth, the shot, he scores! Bullet Seth, low blood side. But well, he scores in back-to-back -back games to kick off the preseason. I think Osman might want that one back. Yeah, I think so, too. You know what? Just slipped right by him. Ryder Muka, pardon me, got the goal. Yeah, Muka looked, he looked great on Tuesday, and he got, his, uh, he got his goal tonight. He's got a pretty good shot, doesn't he? He does, he does. He's a sniper. Really natural, too. He just seems to find the net. My apologies, I thought it was uh, going Seth. It looks so much similar, but it's actually Ryder Muka that gets it. And he goes low blood side here. Like I said, it might be one that Osma wants back, but give Muka credit. He was able to put her in, so he scored back-to-back -back game for goals for him anyway. He's looking really good, really earning a roster spot, that's for sure. So Lepper and Anders, so all newcomers in on that one. A 5 nothing Flint Blonde lead. 16 and a half to play in the third period. And one thing about Muka, and again, we saw the goal that he scored on Tuesday. He gets it on his stick. He knows exactly what he's doing. He does. Knows exactly where to put it. Face off back inside the football zone. The run of the goaltender, Laser Hume, not really tested much tonight. There's a save off his skate. Palmer to work it out. That's Lees. Drop that one back to Hool at center. On side. So that takes the stretch pass. He's across the blizzard blue line. Goes it back in deep for Lockley. Knocked off the puck that time. Oh, nice job to skate outside the zone. Here comes uh, Bouvier to center. He's going to give it up. Back to Krentz. Krentzen tried to feed that one back over to C. Somebody got a stick on it. Krentz got it back. Fired it wide. Silvestri one more time the other direction. Feeds it over to Lee. Lee. Puts it across the blizzard blue line. Hangs on it. Looking for someone to give it to. Dropped it back to blue line. Ten check shot. And the glove stayed that time by Osmond. He'll reach up and grab it. 15-51 to go. The Bombers adding their total to 5-0. Beat the local product. Ryder Buka, not bad. Goals in back-to-back -back games to start the preseason for him. He's looked absolutely fantastic. Really just, like, flows on the ice in his shot. I mean, like you said, he just really seems to find the net, and he just puts it in every time. Gets on his, like I said, it's, it's on, he does no hesitation. He gets, the, you know, the puck on his stick, and he knows exactly what he's going to do. 41-16, by the way, the shots now in favor of the Bombers. But the face off back inside the Blizzard zone. Puts one with the draw. Lapland can't hold it in. Tanchuk over skates it. Opportunity for Edwards. Edwards barely goes. Pass out front of back at a rebound. Edwards jams it in. Good give and go there with Langdon. Langdon started on target. Nobody picks up Edwards. He'll jam it in. And the boots are on the board here at 5 to 1. Edwards was due for one. You know what? He showed a little bit of frustra frustration in the first period, the second period. He was just itching to get a goal and put a point on the board. And uh, you know what? Maybe that's just what they need, right? You know, it's 5 1. 41 shots for the Bombers, 17 for the Blizzard, but uh, sometimes all you need is one score. Well, and I mentioned Edwards is one of their top recruits. Uh, remember the Winnipeg Wild, a pretty successful program in the Manitoba Major Triple A League. Langdon will get the one assist on it. So the Blizzard off the uh, board, they're down 5 1. It's a team to trade a goal here early in the third. Went on back again. Here's a chance, fired on target that time, courtesy of uh, Chichu Laughlin. And that'll take the mask right off the head that time of Osman, and he's, he might have to get a little bit of repair work done, and he's got it off, and I don't know if he's lost a bolt or something, but he's looking at it, he looks like he'll get her back on, but opportunity there for Laughlin to try to get on the board. You know, he'd like to score against the Blizzard. Oh, absolutely. Faceoff will stay inside Blizzard territory. Semp taking the draw this time against Bernier. Blizzard on the board, 5-1, Flint Blanc still in front, 15-16 to play in the third period. Was looking better, though. They'll get the quick pass to center for Ciprian. Just out of his reach. Here comes Egan back the other direction. Drops that one back. Pass got intercepted. Flip on the will hold it in. Cole catch to the blue line. Back on it. Keeps it in. Egan from a sharp angle fires it wide. This will go around the boards and chase Laughlin back in his own zone with uh, the Blizzards. A couple forwards barreling down on him. Egan poked it right back ahead. Knocked down that time by Boyce. 
Egan gets it back off the boards, flips it in off. I thought about racing out to get it, but he'll let Hammond go and get it instead. Picked up by Safrian, lost the handle. He'll get it a second time. Whiffed on it, puck up the blue line. Knocked down by Leffer. His shot got blocked in front of the Blizzard net. Loose puck is cleared, set back to center. Chow waited for it. Feeds that pass to Bridger. Bridger knocked down that time. Nice body check by Kuvalet. Chow back to Bridger. Nice pass that's put to D to get over to Mueller. Broke it up though at the last second. Then it makes its way back to Mueller again. Can't shoot it. Gets it back again. He's like a magnet. The puck keeps coming to him. Finally cleared off the glass and sent back in the flint flon zone. Leffer will give uh, chase with McMullen on top of him. McMullen tied him up, but he got the puck free. Nice give and go pass to Awanis. East to center. Awanis across the blizzard line. Out front, Bridger is shot off the goal post. Back close to being 6-1. Off the post, off the horse, back down in flint flon territory. Nice setup, and a good low shot that time by Bridger. Leffer forced back in his own zone. Feeds it back to Chow at center. Chow down the right side, across the line, back out front. Nice job that time by Bouvier to come over and take that one away from Semp. Semp think I, I think he thought he had a wide open target there, but Bouvier came over and took it away from him. That center, Bourgeois will fire it in. Puck comes in front of the blizzard net, grabbed quickly that time. And sent outside the zone by Whiteman. Bombers bring it back in. This is Cohen Semp. He gets pancake, but he's going to draw a penalty here. As I think it's going to go to uh, Whiteman, the D-man, for maybe a cross-check. He's getting the penalty. And Whiteman can believe it. He's, like, in awe that he got a It is a cross-check, yep. Yeah. Yep. So second power play of the game for Flint Flon. 13.04 to go in the third period. A 5-1 Flint Flon lead and... Couple of goal posts tonight, one by uh, Liam Bridger just moments ago. Like we said earlier, Bridger's really been having a sneaky good game. A, a great, some great shots on goal, but just has been unlucky. That one hit the hit the crossbar bar there, and uh, you know he wants that one back. Stemp will take the face off against the guard. Deep inside the Blizzard zone, puts on the power play. They work it back to blue line. This is Bourgeois on the boards to Egan. Egan takes a look, lets a rip. The glove saved that time off, and it'll reach out amongst a whole lack of traffic in front of them. Reach up and grab that one. Another face-off back inside the Blizzard zone. Once again, Stemp lining up here against Zagari. Zagari wins the draw. Picked up here by Ward. Can't clear, though. Bourgeois holds it in. Left hand boards this time for Egan. To the slot of shot! That got blocked by Ward, and the rebound picked up and fired back down the ice on target. Laser Hume the same, and he'll play it back to center right. Egan's got it. Egan across the line. He'll hang on to it, looking for someone to give it to. Matt Egan, good work along the boards. He's looked good tonight. Cross check this guy to the ice, though. Here's Sem. To the slot. Dropped it back to Laughlin. Can't hold it in. One pass too many. Intercepted. Check for Kubelay. Short handed, but Bourgeois comes over and takes it from him, then takes a pretty good check. One thing about Kubelay, he never gives up on a play. Never. Bombers looking a little uh, disorientated right now. Trying to get something going to the power play. Quick pass to Silvestri. Can't pull the trigger. Comes back to Bourgeois. He'll flip it back to Walker inside the Bombers zone. 58 seconds remaining in the power play. Silvestri turned right around. He'll have to turn things off at uh, square one. Made a good move. Another good move at center. Carries the puck in. Gets to Silvestri. His backhander flip wide looking for Walker. Of course, they connected twice in the opening period. Walker again. Feeds it back out front. Lee's calling for it. Lees to the blue line, hangs on. Justin Lees in the corner. Feeds it back to the play. Hool knocked it down, back out front to Walker, back to Hool. Just inside the line. Walker looking for a lane to shoot it. He'll bring it back to the line. He hangs on. Pass out front. So that's three. Scores! Take that to a Hool, Hartley. On his case, low blocker side. But a tremendous setup nonetheless. But Jacob Walker doing everything he wanted beats Noah Hull perfectly. And low blocker side, no chance whatsoever for Jack Osmond on that one. Boy, a picture-perfect power play goal. And you know what? Truly, Bockler, he's been having himself a night. I mean, Yeah, he just, it's like a puck on a string, right? Yeah, he's been great so far. Really a, a great, uh, great member of this, uh, this Bomber organization. But uh, listen, lots to learn for this Blizzard team here. The Bombers do get a power play, their first power play goal of the preseason. 0 for 3 and OCN on Tuesday, 1 for 2 tonight. And here comes Dawson Carroll quickly across the line. 
Do the pass back out front. Lees will get an assist on that power play goal. And again, Flint Plum right back in, in uh, Blizzard territory with 11 minutes to play in the third. 43-17 is the shot. Knocked away at center ice. That's Zagari. Tried to feed that one back to uh, Edwards, who's got the Blizzard goal tonight. Here comes Flint Plum right back to the direction. Leffer forced back in his own zone. Does dish it off. Aiden Chow looking pretty strong on the back end tonight as well. Trying to play that one ahead to uh, Ander, but broken up, and puck left back inside the Flint Plum zone. Big body check there as Chow gets knocked down below us by Langdon. The Blizzard bench was cheering that. Aiden Chow lifted it ahead. It'll make its way out. Comes back to center. Picked up by the Blizzard defenseman Ward and hammers that up over the glass and into the netting and out of play with 10-17 to go in the, in the final period. 43-17 once again the shots in favor of Flint Plum and uh, the veteran guys tonight, uh, Silvestri, Bockler, Lees, Egan, all looking pretty good. Yeah, the Bombers do look very good. And you know what? I just think this uh, this Blizzard team, like we say, they just got to get used to each other. And, uh, you know, lots to take from when it comes to this uh, performance so far. Blizzard win the face off inside the Flint Flan zone. Not a lot of traffic in the Blomber end tonight. Boulier, his shot of week one got blocked by Tantrick. And he'll play this one back to Laughlin. Lead pass to Wannis, swatted away. Mueller tried to get a stick on it. Picked up instead by C and fired back in Flint Plum territory. Back of his own net, clipped off the board. Intercepted by C. Here is uh, Bouvier, a chance, and his shot goes wide. Krentz will pick it up in the corner. Back of the goal for Bouvier. A little pressure here by the Blizzard inside Flint Plum territory down low. In the corner this time. C along the board, loose the handle. Wannis. Can't get it out, but winds up on the stick that time. And Laughlin pushes it back to uh, Bridger at center, and he'll lift it back down inside the Blizzard zone. Bridger, of course, that goal post the last time he was out there. 9.25 remaining in the third period. 6-1, Flint Flan leads at the second half of the Battle of Northern Manitoba. With the puck pinned up deep in Blizzard territory. And they'll force a face off. And not a bad crowd here tonight. Do to check out the second half? Boy, that was a tremendous crowd. In the paw back on Tuesday night, well over 500 fans there for that one. People are excited. Listen, it's uh, it's a new era when it comes to Blizzard hockey, and uh, man, that Roy is nice. Ooh. Perfect facility. We'll take a break. Media timeout. Right back with the uh, latter part of the third period. Flint Plum in front, six to one here on 102.9 and Flint Plum the Paw Online.com. Clear. When you think freshness, quality, Keep. and local, think of the North of 53 Co-op. Always new things going on in the bakery. Always fresh happenings going on in the meat department. Plus grab-and-go sandwiches, salads, sushi, and more. The North of 53 Co-op prides themselves on quality in their products and customer service as well. Your truly local grocery store, the North of 53 Co-op. You're at home there. Come visit your local Red Apple store. It's your one-stop shop for everything you need. You'll find great brand-name products from fashion, toys, home decor, food, and so much more. They have some amazing everyday deals happening. They are the trusted neighborhood store, providing the best value to 10 seconds through quality products, all at significant savings, and their signature super-friendly service. Red Apple, big brands and big savings. You're on 9.20 to play, third period. Split and flawn in front, comfortably 6-1, no hole on the power play. Moments ago, he's got the puck right now off the face-off action to Matt Egan. I'm impressed with Egan tonight. Well, I think he's going to have a really, really good year here as a 20-year-old. Bell and Reed Rex over the glass and out of play. Egan maybe could be one of the guys considering for the captain coming into the uh, season this year. That's, a, that's always a, a, a big debate when it comes to hockey and the locker room, right? You always want to pick that guy that's just uh, a vocal leader and an, an example for the team. Egan along the board, feeds it back to Bourgeois, who's long shot, deflect, save made, oh, then it's empty, Flint one passes in front of the net, Osman got his glove on it, back up, but who scores again? No a hole underneath the bar, Blizzard couldn't clear, and a two ball for Brothers for Noah Hole, and the Bombers make it 7-1, to one. and again, Mike Picklick. Not a lot of help for the Blizzard netminder. Not a lot of help. Listen, I, I do think when it comes to this preseason game and the fact that they're playing such a great team so early, 
it's going to be a great learning experience for this Blizzard team. I, and you know Eric LeBros is just thinking right now all the ways that they can improve, maybe switching up the lineup a little bit. It's just uh, it's good that they're playing such a great team this early. So Flint Farm makes it 7-1. Noah Hull second of the game. A beautiful shot underneath the bar. And again, we talk about guys coming in to have good years. Noah Hull is certainly one of the guys that will, should be with a big part of this team. So Bourgeois and Sem will get the assist on the big goal. Flint Farm in front, 7-1. 8.47 to go. And another face off outside the Blizzard Blue Line is Jacob Bachler will line up this time against Kubelay. You know, Bachler and Sylvester did a big story in the first period, but uh, they've kind of cooled off. I mean, with Bachler, a nice play on that first goal, whole goal to, tonight, but really, the has been a real big back. Oh, big body check there, lead. Sad pay for this guy. And we got a major Donnie Brook Mike Becklock happening. Lee's uh, wallpapers uh, Kubelay. And that gets a few guys in there coming in. To his aid is Peyton Allard. He's mixing it up with Lees, and they might just go if they'll drop the bits and get out of here. Allard and Lees. Of course, Allard's got the full face shield on. Look, he's just getting somebody's face when he got that. Oh, it's a, it's a shame that these guys don't play year-round, but uh, maybe it's better off that they don't. A little bit of frustration shown on uh well, I mean, he, was, he did get hit pretty hard along the boards. You can he stand did. up for yourself. Absolutely. The least nails him. No doubt a boarding call, I'm sure, coming up to him. We'll see if there's any additional calls that are handed out. Eight and a half to go. 44-17 is the shots in favor of Flintfall. But again, going back, uh, you know, really since early in the game, when Bockler and Sylvester were flying around, they kind of held them at bay. And other guys have started to, to play well here as the game went on. So a lot of firepower for Flintfall. And... Eric's made it no, no secret. They're going to go young this year and they hope to play better game in, game out. They do have some veterans they've added in, but uh, expect a predominantly pretty young Blizzard team. He wants to build a program here. And that's that's the key, right? You know, these guys, you know, they're going to be uh, dealt some hard cards when it comes to this uh, upcoming season, right? There's a lot of great teams in the MJHL. You know, and this, that uh, Steinbeck team pretty tough to beat. Oh, absolutely. They're, uh, they're a fantastic team. I mean, you got Vernon as well. There's a uh, Lots of great teams to go up against. But, Portage uh, is always good. Portage, too. I, I, I do think this Blizzard team, this you know, a game this early, a, a game such a fantastic, uh, you know, organization in the Bombers, I think it's just going to be a great uh, learning experience as well. You know, there's lots of things that you can take from this uh, from this game. There's certain things out downstairs. We'll take a quick time out. Eight and a half remaining in the third period. Flip-flop in front, 7-1. to one. You're listening to uh, the Battle of Northern Manitoba once again on 1029 and Flint Farm in the Paw online.com. Predicting the weather up here in the north can be difficult. Hot, cold, sun. So there's 10 we get for a total, including the pregame furniture or postgame. Center carries may take. Yeah, we're fine. For whatever the weather may be. Muddy pants from a rainy day. May tag. Chip. Hazy, smoky smelling sweaters. May tag. Gross, sweaty tank tops from a hot day. May tag. If you couldn't tell, may tag washer and dryers conquer all the elements. Get yourself one today at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, 688 7587. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, and the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Ten seconds. Operated with experiences in the north, visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. You're on. Like we said during the break there, Mike, and I'm sure if you're listening to Hockey TV, you probably heard me say it anyway. A lot of talking down below, and I'm not they're really having a hard time working this out. Uh, Vockler and uh, Hamming are there getting the instructions for the referee. Now, I believe the original call was unleashed for probably a boarding call. Then, of course, a little bit of a scrum after that, but they seem to... Anyway, Vockler and uh, Hammond come over, and they'll talk to respective coaches, and we'll see how they size it up here. Eight and a half remaining. If you're the Blizzard, I'm sure you'd like to get at least a little bit more power play time to work with. And if nothing else, you know, to, to try and fight in the lead, that's one thing. But again, just to try a few. Again, the preseason, people got to remember, it's all about assessing what players can do what in what situation. And power play time is a pretty good opportunity to see what guys what can do. And the, the first power play tonight, they actually moved the puck around pretty effectively. Didn't get a goal, but they but they cycled it well. No, we got to remember, too, like last year, this team was fantastic during the power play. Guys like uh, Sebastian Hamming, Miguel Bouvier, Sam Zagari, like those guys know 
how to play a good power play, right? So hopefully they can, uh, you know, make something happen here. And uh, again, this is, uh, you know, and if there's one positive you can take from that little scrum there, I mean, this Blizzard team, they have each other's back. That's just the way it is. Spend a lot of time on the road. They're still trying to sort this out. No penalty times up on the board as of yet. I'm assuming that the Blizzard are going to get a power play out of this, I'm thinking. Because Bakwa came right back over again, and he's arguing whatever he told him in the first place. One of the coach and came back and had to have something else to say. So I'm assuming that the Blizzard are going to get a power play here sooner or later. It seems oh, I so. see. Lees is being thrown out of the game. Oh, wow. So Lees is done. He's left the game, and it looks like he's taken Noah Hole with him. A couple of bombers have been left, so now I can see why there's a fuss on the bomber bench. Lees and Hool have both been ejected from the game. That's, uh, you know, you never want to see that, but when it comes to, you know, a hit like that, and when it comes to that scrum, it's just, you know, we don't need that, right? Eight minutes left in the game. I'm just interested to hear what the penalties are. Yeah. Miss, I'm thinking probably what happened is they got ten-minute misconduct. Mm -hmm. And there's eight and a half minutes game remaining, so... Because that wasn't a hit from behind. He, no, no, He no, hit no. him from the side. No, absolutely. So I'm thinking that might, well, well, those will be 10-minute misconducts, I'm thinking. Now Mike's called the referee over. Might as well get him to talk to the popcorn guy because he's talked to everybody else here tonight. This is incredible how long it's taken to get this sorted out here. Please, Louise. Anyway, the Blizzard will wind up for the face-off. Everybody's over at the bomber bench again. Mike wanting another explanation. Again, we're just guessing until we actually hear them announce it, right? But I'm thinking that's probably 10 minutes of misconduct. I, I think so, too, right? It, it got a little bit and intense And they're going to get a initial penalty because somebody's going to serve the penalty now. Looks like Adler's going in. Or Ander, pardon me. Hopefully get back to action here momentarily. Eight and a half to go in the hockey game. It is a blizzard power play. As the Bombers only have four guys, also the blizzard have five. And we'll wait for the announcements here and find out uh, exactly what all the calls are. And now the referee coming on the timekeeper. Well, a lot of confusion down there tonight. I guess everybody else tried to work this out the preseason as well. Hard to believe, too, it's only preseason. I think we're going to finally get around to dropping the puck. We've only wasted about 10 minutes waiting for all this stuff. <laughs> Blizzard power play coming up here sometime. Zagari getting set to take the face off. Looks like he's going to line up here against uh, Alexei Silvestri. So here we go. A Blizzard power play. We're finally back underway. Bombers win the draw. Locker can't clear. Held it along the board. So that listen to these penalties if you can. As the Blizzard will hold it in. They'll drop it back to point. That's picked up here by Cook. Cook has got it. Dropped it back to right point. Pass back out front that time off the tip of the stick of the cigar. I heard gross misconduct for some. It's going to be really interesting to get these penalties all worked out here. Meanwhile, the Blizzard forced back in their own zone. Cook dropped it back to C. Off the left side. Here comes Zagari barreling down the left side inside the flint line zone. Ran out of room. Matt Egan took it from him. That center will flip it back in Blizzard territory. Osmond stopped that back of his net. Minute 14 to go in the power play. 7.45 to go. Did you get all that, Mike? Looks like... Uh, I'll get it from you when we get a break. But you got it? Yeah. Good man. So Mike will update you with all the penalties as soon as we get a break in the action. Cook has got it back in the Blizzard net. He's looking for a way to uh, come up with a little bit of a strategy to get the puck down the ice. Up the left side, he tried to fire that one over to McMullen. Too far for him. An icing call. So uh, what do we got? So it looks like for uh, for the Blizzard side of things, number 26, uh, a fan favorite, Kubalier, he's getting a 10-minute misconduct penalty. And then, uh, as we saw a little bit earlier here, looks like number 15, Noah Hool, and uh, number 23, the worst-kept secret in all, Flint Flintuan, Justin Lies, he's going to be, uh, you know, getting that 10-minute misconduct I, did penalty. They, I heard so. a gross misconduct or something in there, too. I think so, yeah. So if that's the case, he could be getting suspended. Oh, wow. He grabbed the face mask, is what I heard. Blizzard come down the ice, so apparently he grabbed the player's face mask. I heard that, and they called it a gross misconduct. So he could be getting a two-game suspension for that. Yikes. Or however they had determined it. So I guess that's what was why it took so long to figure out what was going on. But apparently, he, well, he did. He grabbed the mask of uh, 
I'm not sure who was Burton. I believe it was number 37, Peyton Allard. Okay, yeah, Allard. So he gra anyway, yeah. he grabbed his face mask, and I heard that. And apparently, uh, well, you're not supposed to do that. No. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. We'll find out more from Mike Reagan in the post-game report tonight. Meanwhile, 40 seconds remaining in the Blizzard power play. But they'll have to start things off with Peter to get it. The Bombers clear it down the ice. That's Hamming. To Bouvier. Onside. Quickly got that over to McMullen. He'll bring it in deep. Mueller, though, took it from him. Couldn't get, couldn't get the puck out. Couple whacks at it, but the Blizzard keep it in. Looking for it back of the bomber net is Bernier. Bumped off the play, but held in by Hamming. Good job at the point. This is Hamming, the veteran Blizzard D-man. Feeds that one back. Over to McMullen. To Hamming. To McMullen. Can't hold that one in. Lost his footing. They'll poke it across the line, but they'll have to get out for the offside, and the penalty is over. And the Blizzard really didn't manufacture much on that power play chance that are 0 for 3 in this game. Hamming racing after it. Goes into the far corner. Picked up here. Nice to free and bumped off the play. Puck will roll back in Blizzard territory. Hamming there to get it again. Back of the goal for Boyce. This is Boyce. The center off Mueller skate. Trying to race down on that one with Safrian. Bouncing puck picked up here by Bridger. Sends it back inside Blizzard territory. Hamming waits for it. Quick pass on the tape to Zagari. He's got Safrian. Safrian down the wing. Made a good move as he crossed the bomber line. Looking for the return pass out front. It's out of his reach. And a big hit there is. Saprian goes down here with Bridger deep inside the Flint Swan zone. Meanwhile, play continues back of the goal. The Blizzards have fired out front, but intercepted. And Flint Swan back the other way. That's Semp. Looking for the puck back inside the Flint Swan zone. Take it away. Bouvier back across the bomber line. Bouvier gets a shot away. Kicked away that time by Laser Hume. Rebound. Along the board. Knocked down by C, but again hit ahead with a glove pass. And... Blown down with 5.19 to go in the game. A 7-1 Flint Swan lead. Looks like they're going to even up the Battle of Northern Manitoba in a game of peace, but we'll see what happens here in the final five minutes. You know, really liking what I'm seeing from uh, Quincy Suffrian for a guy that, uh, you know, arrived in the pond not too long ago, really just uh, yesterday or the day before. Yeah, he's, he just uh, got in. You know, he's looking pretty good. You know, a little bit shaky. You can uh, probably blame that on the, the plane ride there, but uh, he's looking really good tonight. Bombers trying to get the puck out. Blizzard looking for a little bit of uh, pushback. An opportunity that time for Krentz, but he couldn't get a stick on it. Semp take it out hard in front of the Bomber bench. Ander passes behind him. And the puck will bounce back in the Flint Swan zone. Semp is there. Had to be careful. Bouvier all over him. Throws it in the corner. They tried to work it back to Ander, but intercepted that time by C. See back of the bomber net wraparound attempt. I think Laser Hume was able to get the paddle down and make the stop. Puck back of the bomber net. Leper will race after it. The young bomber D man out of Brandon. This is Leper. At his own blue line. Feeds it back to Tanchuk. Tanchuk's got it. Leper. A little bit of a you know, it's funny that the Blizzard throwing a tremendous forecheck out there. Where was this earlier in the game? Uh, you know what? It's uh They're coming at him there. A good forecheck and where was it the rest of the game? Down the right side, cutting in is Bernier. Goes down hard as he crosses the bomber blue line. Off the skate, puts one to clear at the center. Waiting for it that time was Ward. Fed it back to Cook, to Ward. Up the middle, off the left foot stick, and in behind the D. That's a bad call. McMullen, I don't know why they blew that down. I didn't look like anybody was offside. It went off left foot stick, and McMullen grabbed it, but they're quick to whistle it down. And I think I think that was a botched call because you could look at that the at the reaction from uh, LeBras on the Blizzard bench. No, absolutely, absolutely. And McMullen too, he was not too pleased with that call. But uh, you know what? As a, other than that, the refs have been pretty good tonight. They'll bring the face up back to the Blizzard zone nonetheless with Buckler taking the draw here against Sagari. Right off the face off, fired in, and Osmond the save. 3:57 to go. Flintwood approaching 50 shots. 45-18 right now. The official shot count here at the Whitney Forum. Full mounted offensive attack for the Bombers. That backhander just put fly by Silvestri, who started the scoring as 32 seconds in the opening period. Silvestri's got it. Back of the goal for a Buckler. These guys can really make things happen. Knocked off his stick, though. Langdon back the other way to center. Long shot. Stopped here by Laser Hume. When Blanc can't clear, held it at the blue line that time by Zagari. 
Puck thrown in front of the bomber net. Here comes Bourgeois. He'll pick it up and start to skate away. Walker in over the blizzard line. Back out front. He had a couple of guys cutting in the front of the net. Certainly the guy that's got the puck right now in Stanglin. Blue line for Tanchuk. He whips it in wide. Walker back of the goal. Knocked away that time by the big D-man Cook. Edwards has got the blizzard goal. Throws it back to center, but knocked away that time by the bomber defenseman Bourgeois. Kind of taking a bit of a stick. Looks like he's kind of favoring his mouth as he feeds that one too far. And out of the reach that time of Carroll, that means he will not be able to change because it's an icing call. Down to 2.57 remaining, Mike Pickwick. It's been, uh, you know what, it's just one of those games that you got to... You got to remember the lesson, but other than that, maybe put it, uh, take it out of the memory bank. That's for sure, right? Not the best performance from the Blizzard, but again, this is still a very new team, a very young team. Lots to learn from. Off the faceoff. Jeez, we had Miller blow a tire, went down hard in front of his own net. Nobody even touched him. Off the faceoff. Good chance there. De La Salle fires that off the right shoulder. A laser hoom rebound loose in front. Flint's on the clear. Matt Egan, good performance tonight. The bourgeois at center flips the puck in deep inside Blizzard territory. Hamming plays in the blue line. Stuffed out by Chow. A hard drive and good. Low blocker saved that time from Osman. Saw it all the way. Blizzard pick up the puck. Once again, it's the free and being rewarded with a lot of ice time tonight. Feeds it back. Opportunity here. Good move by Della Sal, but then he lost it at the last second. Went on the other direction. Here's Dawson, Charles and Egan. Carroll, the backhand pass. Mueller cuts the front of the net, a shot, and Osmond there once again. Mueller going in untouched, and Osmond stopped in. Flintbond now at 47 shots in the game. Bouvier by himself the other direction, down the wing inside the Flintbond zone. Bouvier will carry in. Knocked down back of the goal that time by Chow. Mueller backhands it back to Chow. He's got it to center. Chow, big reach in over the blizzard line, tried to come back out front to Awanis. Here's Sem. Sem for the Bombers tries to pin that up along the board. Knocked free, sent back down inside Flintbond territory. Leper there, you had Riley C on top of him. That's center ice. Puck sent back inside the Flintbond zone. Leper. Center ice for Bridger. Bridger, a good move, a good head of steam going. He's across the line, a quick shot, and blockered away again that time by Osmond. Rebound back out front. Awanis couldn't get a stick on it. Bridger in the corner. Trying to make something happen. Tries to throw it back out front. Awanis in the corner. Right point it goes for Laughlin. He'll just dump it back in deep and Bridger will race over the corner and pick it up. One minute to go. Chichu Laughlin long shot. Same fade again by Osmond. Rebound. Blizzard can't clear. Leper keeps it in. This is Leper. New traffic. Awanis back of the net. A lot of traffic in front of that blizzard net. Bridger's got himself parked in front of there nicely. Laughlin will hold it. This is Leper. Nice pass out front. Oh, fanning on an Awanis. He was set up perfectly at the side of the net. Leper gets it back again. The Laughlin, a hard shot. Redirected off the stick that time of McMullen. Over the glass and out of play. 28.6 seconds remaining. And all flip flon bombers tonight, 7 to 1. As the final seconds tick down here in the third period. 500 and change, by the way, announced as the attendance here tonight. Based off once again inside the Blizzard zone, the left of the goaltender. Jack Osmond, a relief of Loke Moore in the night. Hasn't been as busy as uh, the guys started the game. 30 shots on Moore, and Osmond's coming and has to face 17. Off the face off, Bombers looking for a loose puck in front of that blizzard net. They gobbled it quickly by Osmond at 8.1 seconds to go as a few folks make their way home for the Whitby Forum tonight. For Mike Reagan, I think you have to be pretty happy with what you saw from your group tonight, right? I mean, listen, this is a, a very, very good Bomber team. I mean, you heard Mike Reagan in uh, your first preseason interview, like a lot of vets on this team, talk full of vets. You can really tell tonight. Puck back to the blizzard net, dying down the last few seconds as... Cook tries to do something, and he's going to mix it up there at the end of the game. Look out. Ward comes over. He wants a piece of somebody. Anyway, that'll do it for the game here tonight. The Flintstone Bombers. Uh, 
able to put seven behind that good and again good goaltending by those closer goaltenders but it could have been worse no truly you know what i do think they have something special in this uh in this tangent here uh Luke Morin and Jack Osman, they're great, great players, you know, probably could have used some help on the back end a little bit, but uh, what are you going to do? Listen, this is, again, I, I, I feel like I keep saying this, but I, this is a great learning experience for this squad, for this young squad, and uh, a great learning lesson for LeBros, too. Good side of sportsmanship here, the Bomber coaching staff coming over, shaking hats for the Bush coaching staff, of course, we won't see them again until next season. But the impressive game, an impressive victory by the Bombers, nonetheless, who do lose Justin Lee. It's going to be interesting to see if, in fact, it is a gross misconduct, like I heard correctly. That will be a suspension of some magnitude. And anyway, we'll ask Mike Reagan about that and a few other things as he makes his way up to the booth here tonight as the Bombers make their way off the ice. So, again, the final score, the Flint Farm Bombers, 70. Paul, is, it the, is it just the Blizzard or the Paw Blizzard? The Blizzard. The Blizzard, yeah. It's kind of like Madonna and Prince, then. <laughs> yes, <laughs> anyway, Flint Fun wins it tonight, 7 1. That's the final here on 1029. And of course, Flint Fun the Paw, online.com. Clear. Eight. That sound. Kick. That feel. And that taste. Nothing compares to bubbly, sparkling water. A variety of different flavors. Zero calorie, zero sugar. And all smiles. Add a little flavor to your life and get that refreshing, crisp taste that you crave. With Arctic Beverages, proud supplier of bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Nothing makes you feel more at home than a belly full of delicious food. And at Chicken Chef, they do exactly that. Make you feel at home. From the signature chicken and tasty pizza to fresh salads, yummy sandwiches, and hot soups, they always satisfy your appetite. And with new delicious specials every day, there's always something new for you to try. And what's a good meal without one of their decadent desserts? Fully licensed and fully delicious Chicken Chef, where it always feels like home. Jeans Telecom, your wireless communication specialists. They carry Motorola two-way radios, Fleetnet radios, Toshiba office products, Global Star satellite phones, and Sirius satellite radios. And they offer internet services, computer, and networking services. The Blueberry Jam Music Gathering organizers have said the service from Jeans and quality of the Motorola two-way radios were essential to our success. You should call Jeans Telecom and find out how their personal service will benefit you. Staple items like bread and buns, or just because items, muffins, cookies, and pies, so good you think you're dreaming, but you're not. You're at the North of 53 Co-op. I know, you're shocked, but you shouldn't be, because the Co-op serves up hot and delicious baked goods every single day. And the only 10 seconds other than their bakery is Mom's Kitchen, and that's debatable. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. You're on. And we're back here at the Whitney Forum, a solid 7-1 victory for the Flint Farm Bombers. Let's run down all the goals here tonight. And again, it took all of 32 seconds for Flint Farm to hit the board. Alexis Sylvester gets this uh, kind of a side of things to come tonight. He scores uh, just inside the blue line. And again, he fooled uh, Lloyd Morin for sure. He wasn't expecting. You could tell after the puck was in, he kind of reacted late to it anyway. Nice goal from Jacob Vockler, uh, setting him up to open up the scoring 32 seconds in. They would do uh, the same this time. Vockler receiving end of a nice feed from Silvestri. That came at the 10:44 mark, giving the Bombers a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes of play. Uh, Ander, the rookie, was able to jam one in. His uh, first of preseason at 3:42, 3-0 Flint Flon. Then Stengel, the rookie, gets his first from uh, Tanchuk and Egan. That came at 8:06, so 4-0 Flint Flon after two. Uh, they would get uh, rewarded with a nice goal once again. Ryder Mika, the hometown product, back-to-back -back goals for him in the first two preseason games. His second of the preseason. Ander and Leffer, the assists at 327. The Blizzard would get on the board, their only goal tonight. Edwards, like we said, one of their uh, highly touted uh, prospects under the Winnipeg Wild program. He gets a goal. It was a nice, uh, he started to play, got the puck in deep. I uh, did the wraparound. Save was made by Laser Hume. Uh, the rebound picked up by Landon. He fed it right back out. He sprung, he was wide open. Banked it in for his first of the preseason to make it a little bit tighter at that point, 5 to 1. But a couple of goals by uh, Noah Hull would seal it tonight. His first in the power play from Bocker and Lees at 9.37. Then at the 10.59 mark, he's left alone on front to bury his second just underneath the bar. Bourgeois and uh, Semp, the assist on that one at 10.59. So shots in the third period. Again, all Flin Flon, 14-4. to 
or sorry, nine to four for Flint Flon in the third period. They wind up with 47 tonight, and the Blizzard wind up with 18. You got to get more than four shots in the third period. No, absolutely. Listen, I, I, I they didn't get out coached, but they simply got outplayed, and I think the experience really shows when it comes to this veteran squad that is the the Flint Flon Bombers. They look absolutely fantastic, and again, like. Uh, like Coach Mike Rogan, uh, R Rogan Wigan said, uh, it's just uh, they, they like to, to have their main guys, right? They, they like to have experience. They like to have vets. And it really shows tonight. And, uh, you know, you can say that uh, there, it's it's a learning learning experience for all parties when it comes to the Blizzard squad. You know, you do have a couple of vets in uh, Miguel Bouvier, Sam Zagari, and uh, Sebastian Hamming. But uh, when it comes to these younger guys, they just got to get used to the pace and really just get used to the the, the overall speed when it comes to uh, you know this league. Be interesting to say too. Obviously, I know uh, chatting with Eric, of course, to get before the game tonight, and said there's some bubble guys again. He he made no qualms about it. Some guys that he didn't thought didn't think played well on Tuesday, cut them loose. Probably a few guys that will. Uh, be heading somewhere else after this game for the, for the Blizzard tonight. Yeah, you know, that's the unfortunate part when it comes to, uh, you know, prof well, s somewhat professional hockey, right? But uh, it's just what how, how it goes, and that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And you got to think, you know, if uh, Le Coach LeBros is maybe uh, scheming up a few things uh, in, in free agency or maybe a couple of trades, maybe he's looked at a few guys already, but uh, that's just one thing that, you, you know, you definitely got to look at when you're, uh, when you're a coach and a GM in a new organization. All Flint Flon tonight. They win it 7-1. to one. We'll take a break. You think you got three stars left in you again here tonight? You think you pick it on three stars? Oh, absolutely. All right, so uh, Mike will uh, look after that. We'll come back with him, and hopefully Mike uh, Reagan before we sign things off tonight. Decent crowd, and uh, great effort from the Bombers once again, able to put up seven tonight. 7-1 seven -one victory, taking the second half of the Battle of Northern Manitoba here on 102.9 and Flint Flon and the Paw online.com. Claire Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this bomb yes. broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, yep. charities, and so much more, Hud Bay has supported our community with dedication and generosity, contributing to events and organizations. Hud Bay thanks the people of Flint Fawn for their continued support. September is SUV month at Great North GM, and they've got you covered. They've got the newly designed 2024 Buick Encore GX, and the new 24 Buick Invista, Chevy Trailblazer, and Chevy Trax. Not to mention a heap load of 2024 GMC Terrains, Acadias, and Chevy Equinoxes, and of course, the large and in charge, legendary GMC Yukon, and Chevy Tahoe models all dropping this month. It's always a great day at Great North GM in the ball down with cutlery down with cutlery down with cutlery i know just the thing kfc wait what kfc you never have to use cutlery again with the famous chicken chicken sandwich what about the fries you don't need cutlery for the now season to perfection fries making them even more flavorful and crispier than before hmm no need for cutlery for original recipe chicken from KFC either. Cutlery probably necessary for coleslaw, macaroni, and potato salad. KFC, so good. Your home is important to you. It's where you feel comfortable. Which is why when the snow falls and the wind gusts, you need to stay protected. With Jim's Custom Doors and Windows, from the installation of new windows and doors to the replacement of old leaky ones, their technicians can provide. And by installing proper airtight seals and harsh weather-proof products, you can Ten keep your home protected while reducing your energy bill by up to 25%. Call Jim's Custom Doors and Windows today, 687-7071. You're on. And welcome back to Whitney Farm. Before we bring in the coach, uh, Mike Pickwick's got our three stars here tonight. Mike, let's start things off with star number three. So star number three, you might, I mean, you got to give it to Ryder Muka. I mean, that one, that first goal, he's been... Uh, He's been absolutely fantastic, and not only did he score today, he scored on Tuesday as well. Really uh, a great performance back-to-back. -back. Uh, number two, you got to go with number 41, uh, Jacob Bockler. I mean, really, he could have had a couple of goals tonight, but, uh, you know, just a couple of missed opportunities. That's okay. It's preseason. But uh, he looked fantastic, had, uh, had one goal, two assists, and uh, three points overall. And then uh, number one, you got to go with uh, Noah Huell. I mean, two, uh, two goals. He looked absolutely fantastic. Really, uh, really a smooth shot, and just uh, you know, brought it home two times, and two, and uh, had two points uh, overall tonight. A couple honorable mentions for me: Alexi Silvestri scored that nice goal, 32 seconds in, plus an assist. And I'll give Lloyd Moore and the OCM Blizzard yeah. starting goaltender 30 shots tonight. 
made some good saves to keep his team in it. Uh, Mike, thanks a lot for helping out. I, I appreciate it. Great job. I'm going to bring Mike Craig in the coach, and we're going to wrap things up. So, uh, great job, and good luck uh, with, uh, with the Blizzard this hey, year, okay? Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay, Mike Pick, the color commentator tonight, will hand things off to the head coach and GM of the Bombers, Mike Craig, and who makes his way up here. Seems just like yesterday we did this, Mike. Uh, another summer's coming on. <laughs> here you are up here again. But you're better looking this year. Well, that's debatable, but <laughs> I'll, I'll take the compliments anytime I can get them. But uh, pretty solid 7-1 victory. I mean, you score 32 seconds, and it set the tone early. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to do. You know, Hardy, I think that uh, we've talked about it many times, uh, whether it be on the air or out, off the air, about, um, you know, our standards and expectations. And, uh, you know, I think with our mature group here tonight in there, uh, it was great to see uh, Alexi get on the board early. That's good for his confidence. Uh, good for the team, but I thought that we, the nice thing about tonight was we kept going, and we talked about it in uh, the intermissions about being a team that plays a full 60 minutes and being a determined team and uh, focused, you know, and we're trying to build an identity and a culture right now, and we did a, a pretty good job here tonight. Well, like I said, you got goals from, uh, I guess, six different players, uh, two goal performance from Noah Hull, uh, but so, just, just so smooth back there, Mike. I mean, the guy is just such a good skater. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because Alec Mallow, remember Mallow? And, yes. You know, I mean, Julian's probably listening right now, but uh, we had talked about getting Noah here before, and, and I think the biggest thing was is obviously having Donnie here. We have a history with the family, tremendous family, um, really bleed maroon, and, uh, you know, obviously Noah wanted to be a bomber, but... Uh, you know, it was tough times that, that first year with uh, COVID and everything like that. And uh, it was difficult to be able to see Noah play. And I talked to Alec about him, and he said, Mike, he's he's a great player, and he's a really good skater. We saw some video on him and stuff like that. But uh, I think, you know, talking with Julian, he really wanted, uh, you know, it to be an opportunity where I saw him live and, and wasn't going based on, on the relationship with, with the family or or having Donnie here and, and let Noah make his own path. And, you know, it didn't work out at that time, but obviously getting him last year in a trade, um, you know, we, we believe that Noah should be the best offensive defenseman in the league. And uh, he's very smooth, like you said. He's uh, very shifty and creative, and you can see that he's confident. And uh, I think he had a good summer this year, and he's going to play a big uh, factor in our success this year. It's going to be fun to watch for sure. Let's talk about the local, local product, Ryder Muka, of course, in back-to-back games to uh, start the preseason. He's got a pretty nice shot. Yeah, you know, Ryder's came a long ways. I, I've seen, I mean, obviously, he's been through the hockey school. He's a local guy. You know, he's pretty quiet, you know, and I uh, asked him on the bench if he wanted the puck, and, you know, his first goal as a, as a bomber in this building, and I know he scored the other night and that, but... He's played really well, and, and uh, he's worked extremely hard, and, um, you know, we're excited about uh, the future of, of Ryder. You know, I, I can, I, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say guarantee, but I'm 99% sure that this guy's going to be a bomber at, at some point, and uh, whether that's this year or next year, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be a, a great local product here, and it's nice to see, obviously, you got Justin and Joey in, on the team right now, and it be nice to have another local guy coming up here through the ranks. Couple things, Mike. I want to ask you before we wrap it up. Speaking of Justin, uh, I what kind of like you grabbed the guy? Like what kind of a penalty was it? I think did I hear gross misconduct? Did I hear that right? No, uh, no, that's what Noah ended up getting. Uh, uh, Justin got uh, um, a hit from behind, and then uh, Noah for grabbing yeah, the I thought, cage. Okay. And you know what? Here's here's going to be the problems with this year. Guys with cages. You know, they're they're able to punch guys in the face and stuff like that where your 19 and 20 year olds are, are left there helpless trying to grab onto something or can't do the same thing. So, you know, I mean, a natural reaction and that sort of thing. But that's that's the way the rules are this year. And we're going to have to make those adjustments as as uh, individuals and talk about it as a team and make sure that we're conscious of that. And, you know, we talked about it. The coaches are extremely frustrated with this rule. Um, we don't understand it. It it, uh, it makes no sense to me. It's, you know, from an insurance standpoint, yeah, I, I get that there's uh, issues there, but uh, from everyone that I've talked to, we're willing to pay the difference. And uh, I, I don't know if I can get in trouble for talking about this, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's junior hockey. And uh, guys in, in the Western Hockey League get to, get to wear visors, but 
our guys can't. You know, it doesn't make sense. And uh, so it is what it is, and we've got to make those adjustments. It's no different than when they took the clutching and the holding and the hooking out of the game. You know, there was an adjustment period, so we'll uh, we'll have to make that. Another question, Mike. Uh, Colin Olofsson, I mean, that's a regular guy that, again, I see, you know, walking around that I don't any idea when he might be ready to, to, to go? Yeah, I, I mean, if we're... If this is the regular season, he's probably playing. Okay. Um, you know, if it was playoffs, he'd definitely be playing. Um, but we've got to be smart, too. Same with Joey, you know. Uh, so we're uh, we're thinking big picture, right? And, you know, it, it sucks for Kylan. You know, he's uh, he's probably one of the most underrated players on the team as far as, but not, not, not within the team. Guys see what he does for us day in, day out. Like last year, I mean, you, you wouldn't believe in the playoffs. So uh, you probably know, but like, he could barely hold on to a stick. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every time I talk to him, he's like, I I'm good, Rex. I'm good. You know, like, I'll, I'm going to go and, and that sort of thing. He's a warrior. He's a responsible 200-foot player. He's a valuable member of our team. And uh, we want to make sure he's healthy for the start of uh, the regular season. How's it work for cut downs now, Mike? Uh, well, we'll get through tomorrow night. We're not doing anything here tonight. Uh, we'll get through tomorrow night and then we'll assess, hey, uh, you know, after a, a good performance like this, uh, you feel good as a coach about your team and, uh, you know, some guys, I mean, it's really tough to say that anybody played bad tonight, you know, so uh, the guys that were in the lineup, I mean, hey, they did their job there. They met those expectations and those standards. So now it's up to the guys tomorrow night to do the same thing. And then we're going to have some tough decisions. And at the end of the day, it's, it's not a... A, a thing that I enjoy these guys you know we do a, a a very intensive job on trying to find character and uh, our scouting staff and myself Cole we talk a lot about prioritizing that and these are good kids every kid that's here is a good kid so you know it's tough when you have to make those decisions but it's part of the job and I've said it before if you're not willing to do it then you can't be in this business so um, you know, the older I get, the tougher it is to make these decisions and see the heartache of some kids, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you haven't been through it before. So I guess, Mike, uh, you go to LaRange tomorrow? Yeah. Melford Tuesday? Yeah. And then back hosting LaRange here next Thursday to yep. wrap up the preseason, right? Yeah, and then we have our golf tournament on the Friday, and, uh, and then we're getting ready for uh, season opener in Nippon. Yeah, and then right back against Melford here on the uh, home opener the next night. So uh, a lot of fun times ahead. The regular season's upon us, and... Uh, Always good to be back at the Whitney Forum. Yeah, you know, t tonight it really felt good being on the bench. And, you know, you're kind of, I'm proud of the guys, what I saw tonight. Uh, it's it's what you expect. I thought we were fast. I thought we moved the puck real well. For our first game, guys were zipping it around pretty good. And, uh, like I said, it was pretty tough to, to pinpoint anybody not, not playing well. Mike, thanks for this. Uh, look forward to, of course, plenty more interviews throughout the year. And a uh, solid 7-1 victory. Nice way to... Uh, take the second half of the Battle of Northern Manitoba. Yeah, thanks, Artie. Mike Reagan, the head coach GM of the Bombers. His team very successful tonight, like we mentioned. That's going to pretty much wrap up our uh, final preseason broadcast. We will not be doing any more preseason games, but look forward to, of course, uh, the start of the regular season. And like Mike mentioned, uh, opening weekend coming up, the uh, 22nd in Nippon, and back to host the Melford Mustangs in the 23rd, both the games right here on 1029 and, of course, LinsbonOnline.com. Big thanks to everybody that made this broadcast happen. Mike Pickwick, again, Best of luck to him with the Blizzard this year. Great to have him work with us the last couple of days. And enjoy Mike, a nice young man. He'll do a great job. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, great to have him up here uh, helping us out to uh, kick off the season. As well, a big thanks to Raphael Spray back at the CFER studio, I believe. Uh, Derek Logan back at CJAR in the Paw. Uh, respective coaches, Mike Reagan, uh, as well as uh, the uh, Eric LeBros, the head man of the Blizzard, for their comments before and after the game. Dustin Lee's the first intermission in Gatlin Church, of course, the uh, Head coach GM of the uh, CBCN Select for joining us in the second intermission. Of course, his team's camp continues. Again, the blue and white game to wrap up their uh, three, their uh, main camp will be happening uh, here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So feel free to drop on by and take a look at that. Final score, the Bombers win 7-1. Taking the second half of the Battle of Northern Manitoba. That's a wrap here on 102.9 and FlintFawnOnline.com. Have yourself a great weekend. You deserve it. 1029 CFA. We're clear. Thanks you for being a part of tonight's Bomber broadcast. And he sounded smooth, smooth on this end, was good. This broadcast is strictly prohibited.